Oh dear. Oh dear, sweet, terrible creatures from the bay. Evil creatures from the deep. You thought us weak. You thought us stupid. You thought you could just get a quarterback in the draft and come in here to... I forget if this game is actually being played on the road or not. You, I don't care where it's being played. No, it's in Detroit. It's in Detroit. You think you're going to come here? No, you can't. You can't. The Lions are back. The Lions are back. The Lions are back. Uh, get the kneecaps out of the way. I don't give a shit about the kneecaps. We'll bite other things too, you know. Elbows. Those are tasty. Thighs. There's always the good meat. Always good meat on the thighs. Dark meat. Arms. Wings. Brains. Make some head cheese. I don't care. Listen, that's all to, to the you up in the Bay Area. Those are all not organic. You understand? They're not organic. You won't eat them. They are not free range. This is chopped, processed, slurried, and slopped right on your plate. That's how that's what uh, goes into our lovely Coney dogs. Yes! The Lions are back and 49ers. You're not making it across the Oregon Trail this time. You're not coming back the other way. You got typhoid. You got gout. You're going to die. You're going to die. Ah! The Lions are back. They're premature. We're probably losing this game. Who cares, though? We will destroy you in spirit, though. Mm. There is no end. There is no end for you. 49ers. 49ers. No. I have the number for you is zero. Zero dysentery. Yes, thank you. Twitch chat is reminding me of the other disease from Oregon Trail I kept mi missing. D dysentery. Yes, everything shall perish. The Kool-Aid is on. The lions are back. I already cracked my can. So welcome to the Pride of Detroit POD cast. For those not, not watching at home, the Lucha Mask is on, as always, to start the season. We got that out of the way. We got the psychosis out of the way. Now let's uh, do the rest of the show. All right. Hi, I'm Chris Perfett, the adequate host at Chris Perfett on Twitter. P-E-R-F-E-T-T. -E -E You'll allow me each year just once. That's only. That's all I ask is once to get the dander up. Now over to Ryan Math. Oh, excuse me. Actually, yeah, yeah. Screw it. We're going reverses this time. Ryan Matthews. At Ryan underscore P-O-D. Let's go, Ryan. Lions are back. The Lions are back, and Jeremy is sitting back in his chair because he's that upset that I got billing over him. So thank you, Chris, for introducing me. I am here. I am ready for a new season of Lions football. Why don't, why don't you go see how that other guy's doing over there? Why don't you introduce him since you keep stealing host <laughs> oh. duties? All right. Well, let me introduce him as the editor-in-chief of Pride of Detroit. You can find him at Detroit on Lion. It's the third man in the podcast, Jeremy <laughs> Reisman. Welcome to the jungle, baby! You're gonna That's die! <laughs> I had to hold that in what are we for doing? super long. Wow. We're ready. It's, it's game week, y'all. You get it's relegated to third when you become a traitor. <laughs> we'll talk oh, about that do? later. Oh, okay. What? You're gonna you're gonna tease us like that? Oh hey, that'll be a scraps talk. Two things off your bingo card. Right off the <laughs> Two things top. off the bingo Let's card. Go. I still need to make the bingo card for the season. The season is on. It's here. The long summer of discontent is over. And now it's time to talk about the Lions, real Lions football. We keep moving the goalposts. First, it's like, all right, we have football back. It's the pre it's the training camp. Okay, now it's real games. It's the preseason. And now, all right, the fake games are out of the way. Real games. Real football. Real men. Real girl. Real real grit and then and then come january we're like all right that was just a regular season now it's lions postseason baby which mm -hmm. means draft coverage no no <laughs> <laughs> that's off season you do, you thought you <laughs> thought <sighs> all right so what we're going to do on this podcast first off we're going to talk about our overall season expectations because we like to revisit things sometimes we've got a schedule up in front of us we've seen a preseason we've seen the final roster we're ready to, to articulate our thoughts upon this season. Uh, last month, we also did the State of the Pride before the preseason. We are going to revisit that and give a new State of the Pride going into the actual season itself. And then later on, we will look forward to the 49ers game. First Bite is back. We do have a host from, I mean, a guest, excuse me, from the Bay Area who will be joining us for, for First Bite. So we'll get the 49ers angle then. 
But on this show, we're getting the lion's angle. So I'm uh, I'm a little winded after that. I'm not going to lie. And this Lucha mask is hot. So just Jeremy, we're here. The lions are here. Um, I kind of feel like I'm saying that as a threat a little bit this time around. Um, and I know our expectations are probably low and we've tried to make them as low as possible, but I just, I, I want to start this by asking a very pertinent, very in-depth, very, very insightful question. Um, where are you at? Uh, I think, I think I'm at a, at a content level of low expectations. Like you said, uh, I, I came into the off season you know, I think when the, the schedule first came out, I threw out 7 and 10, and that was just kind of like a random F you, like I have to do this because everyone does season predictions when the schedule comes out and didn't put a lot of thought into it. And then obviously, um, you know, training camp happened. I, I think it, it lowered my expectations a little bit, to be completely honest. And that's fine. Like, I'm not upset about it. I, I, obviously, I want the team to do as well as they can this year and, and surprise a lot of people, but you know, I, I have low expectations. This team is incredibly, incredibly young, as we talked about on a previous podcast. And young could mean promise, but it doesn't always mean promise. I think that's important to point out while we, we have all these, we have all these what if scenarios, right? This year, like what if Jeff Okada takes a big jump? What if Will Harris suddenly takes that year three jump that, that the coaches have been saying they've been seeing same with, uh, you know, Tracy Walker and, you know, what if Jamie Collins succeeds in, in a non-Patriots, um, you know, defense? What if Jared Goff recaptures his magic? Like, yes, if everything goes right, this team has a potential to surprise some people. That being said, it they're not all going to, you know, you're not going to roll doubles every time or, or whatever the, the sevens <laughs> sevens every time. It, it's just not going to happen. There are going to be some setbacks. There are going to be some players that don't reach their full potential this year. And so it's probably going to result in some pretty poor play at times. And I'm okay with that because the Lions have have really resolved themselves into a full rebuild, into a very, very young roster. And that means this team will be hopefully I, – I think my goal for the season now at this point is just I want this team to look a lot better in December than they do now. That's it. Mike Ryan dropped. is nodding his head. <laughs> Mike He's dropped. Right, nodding his head fiercely at the very strong. I want to see this team do all right in December. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm mostly lock in step with Jeremy. I, I think that overall, Chris, after the preseason, after training camp, after the dust had settled, and then e even I, I would say all the way up until roster, you know, uh, shuffling and everything like that. After the Lions got down to 53, and then obviously had to do some some maneuvering to get their final, you know, quote unquote roster set. I'm, I'm just looking at this team and I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be competitive. That's, that's kind of like my baseline. Like I just want them to be competitive. Like if they can get out of this season without any just pitiful, poor showings where they, you know, get blown out. Like think back to the Tampa Bay game a year ago. Like as long as anything like that doesn't happen, I think I'm going to be I'm going to be pretty cool with whatever the Lions can pull off in their first season. Like I know Jeremy hates throwing out number predictions when it comes to win losses. I don't really care for them either, but I I'm kind of with Jeremy like when when the schedule dropped, I I thought 6 and 11. I I can easily be talked into 5 and 12. This could be a four-win team. Um I I I see them at least winning a couple games, but um yeah, I'm going yeah. I'm I'm going lower. I'm and I, I, the last thing I wanted to say too was I think my expectations for the entire season changed as soon as they trade Matthew Stafford, right? Right. So I, I don't think there's a single move that happens for the rest of the off season that moves the moves the knob even close to what that did. And I think that completely re rejiggered my expectations when it came to this season. No, that that move ripped the knob off completely. Yeah, right. we weren't we weren't moving anything after that. Um. I went a lot lower than six. I think when I put in for the writing, I think I might have said three and 14. But that's about where I'm at. It's just that as much as there's, you, you say you don't want to see the Lions blown out. I think there's maybe one, maybe two games where that could happen just because of the matchups. Uh, there's some 
teams, even who you look at this year and say, yeah, they're not great, but they still provide matchup problems for this team. This this team still is bat, very going to be one of the worst defenses in the league this year. Even with you know some improvement from those guys that, with Patricia removed. That said, I think that what I want to see is just uh, the one word I'm looking for is upside. I want to see the upside on these guys. Because there's a lot of guys who, depending on what happens to them this year, completely change the, the the strategy for the Lions moving forward into the next season. And I mean, that's Jared Goff. Does Jer is Jared Goff going to play well, or are you going to get more of the same of 2020 Jared Goff? Is Jeff Okuda has he righted? The, is he going to be, you know, trending upwards, or is that going to be kind of an issue moving forward? a lot of these younger guys the lions have placed their 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 faith in are they going to be are they going to show you why you should stick around for them for the longer term or do you have to just kind of reach into the uh candy jar again and see what what else you can pull out there's there's a lot of questions for the team it's extended but as you say this is the first real rebuild for the lions since stafford first came to town like the fur the first full one where we've just completely ripped the band-aid off completely thrown out everything and just trying to work back from scratch again. Even the offensive line right now, like is probably the strength of the team, but at the same time, it also needs some time to gel together, especially with Pene Sewell being a rookie tackle moving to right tackle and uh, trying to get, you know, everything worked out in the system. It, to me, it almost seems like the coaches are, are on stage more so than the players this year, right? Like this, I think that's the one source of optimism right now because a lot of these young players, we don't know what they are. And I'm not sure we're going to figure out in one season in a new system surrounded by a bunch of young guys who don't have a ton of veteran leadership to look up to other than the coaches. And so to me, I think the coaches are on display this year. And, and if we can see all the stuff we saw in training camp, which is high energy guys have all the players, you know, buying in and, and a lot of them improving like age. I mean, I've said it all off season. Like I'm, I'm, thrilled with the amount of players that have already um you know progressed in, in their level of play just over the past month or two in guys like AJ Parker and Jeff Okuda and and and, and, just, and you know Derek Barnes and just all these young guys who are, are balling out now there are some counter examples to that the Lions didn't find a wide receiver they didn't find a, a tight end three sun god <clears throat> he's doing well Panay sun Sewell, god not doing that well but I think my overall point is just like if if the coaches to me can show that they can progress these players, then I'm going to feel good about this future, regardless of the roster, honestly, because eventually the roster will get in place unless it, and eventually the Lions will have talent in place. Maybe it's not top tier talent. Maybe it's not star tier talent. But if they have good talent in place, which they don't quite yet, and they have a great coaching staff, I think that can make a difference like a huge difference. And so if the coaches can impress me as much as they have already um, throughout the next four months, I'm going to feel really, really good about the future of this franchise. And we've started to see this lately because I feel like after an entire summer of joking about Dan Campbell and kneecaps and everything he's said, I've seen some pieces lately, Jeremy from the ringer and from other places that have actually stopped and tried to listen to Dan Campbell. Right and are starting to put a, a little more of a shine on it. Now that might be, but right. That might be a glaze right before the sacrifice. And I think as those losses pile up, especially locally, you're going to see some voices, especially from our friends in the newspaper industry, just calling for heads right off the bat, because this is a new normal. As I said, yep. this is, this is new. This, this kind of complete from the ground up is new. It hasn't been here for over 10 years. Lions may have underperformed in the past, and that's how everyone kind of expects it when the when the losses pile up. But it's I don't think it's going to be a bet like it, he still has plenty of room to work with. So you just kind of it'll be interesting to see how strained that relationship becomes when those losses pile up. But for right now, I think at least for most people who seem to know the Lions properly, you're not expecting too much and any wins are going to feel great. They're going to feel like house money unless you are rooting for draft position, in which case I've got nothing for you at that point. That, that is going to be like the ultimate late season thing, right? Like, cause like I said, yeah. I, I expect this team to be better later in the season. 
uh, than than they are now. And we saw it with the Miami yeah. Dolphins, right? Like they they sold everything. They started from a new. They they did a full rebuild. They had that season where they started like zero and seven, and people were like, "This team might go zero and 16. And then they rattle out rattle off like six wins in their last eight games or something like that. I'm fine with that. Like I know I know that's going to push the lines down to like picks twelve through thirteen. But if they show that much improvement and prove that many people wrong, I'm in. Like that's that's great news. That's not bad news. That's great news. And Ryan, there is quite a bit of competition for worst team this year too, which I mean, maybe that moves wins to other teams. And so maybe getting some wins near the end of the year doesn't hurt them as much, but uh, yeah. I mean, just looking at the Lions schedule, if you're talking about down the stretch, I mean, I would say that three out of the four teams that they play in the, in the final four weeks are all teams that have playoff aspirations. Packers, Seahawks, Cardinals, the only, the only one of those teams, you know, without playoff, you know, expectations or hopes is the Atlanta Falcons and who knows what Kyle Pitts will be able to do to this defense. Who knows? We'll see. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, the one thing I do know is that Jeremy is really onto something in the sense that the coaches will be the source of optimism or they will be the source of much torment over the course of the season, because everybody is going to be, everybody is really comfortable with losing right now. Until, like you said, Chris, it those happens. losses start piling up. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like it, it's it's fun to play in that fantasy world where the Lions aren't one and eight, or they're not two and twelve, and it's been a long season, and they're just continuously getting kicked in the nuts. But I think that what will be the deciding, or this will be the the difference maker, was that you won't have a you won't have a figurehead, or you won't have a head coach coming out and you know puffing his chest when it comes to his prior accomplishments. Like, yeah, I'm I'm excited for the coaching staff to accept responsibility and for me to actually believe it. Yeah, I think that's right. I I am curious how combative it'll be, but I think um, if any trouble does happen between the press and Dan Campbell, we'll just blame Jeremy at the end of the day. That's fair. That's (laughs) okay. That all aside. So we we've talked about this. We talked about what, what will surprise us, what will expect us. Um, just going rapid fire down here, then what game do you would uh, looking at this? Can they maybe win that you won't expect them to win on the schedule? A game that they, that you, I mean, I don't like, I, I don't, I feel like they could surprise any game. Like I, this is the NFL. That's just how it works. I know, I know this is a scapegoat answer, but like, I don't say the whole name. If you're going to, if you're going to be like, Ed, it could be any week. You've got to go whole. let me, I'm but, giving. I'm going to give my, Jeremy my a larger, radio lesson. No, now. my larger point here is that National Football League. Fuck National Radio. Okay, we're not National no, no, Radio. No, no, say, say that. <laughs> say, say it. Do you want to be that guy? You want to pump up the NFL? You got to say National, National Football League. No. Spell it out. I think my point is like I don't think this team. I mean, overall, they don't have a lot of strength, but I don't think there's glaring weaknesses either. Like wide receiver, maybe, but I, I think there's potential just about in every other position. So that means it can all click in one week, like just one week. It could all go right. And they could surprise the team. They could beat the Packers. They could beat the Ravens. Like, I, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not going to predict those things to spe- to specifically happen, but I just, I just think this team is like below average in everything. That's how I would kind of yeah. describe this team in general. Maybe there, there are some exceptions here and there, but if they can just play, if it all clicks. And, and like I said, this, this coaching staff brings a lot of energy they bring a lot of, you know, put, you know, put the, the last play behind them, positive reinforcement. If all those things can just click in one week, like I'm not ever going to count the Lions out in a game this year. I'm just not. I'm going to count them out in quite a few games. I, I Me too. Probably, I'm going to count them prob- out quite a bit. Probably the majority of them. I will. I, there's, I think there's four winnable games on their schedule. They that's, have the Bengals. That's it? They have the, they have the Eagles. The other are, are no chance. The other 13. I, I I think in my prediction, I said Bengals, Eagles, and a split with the Vikings for my three and 14. I think the Falcons, I, maybe I'm in love with Kyle Pitts, but that's a matchup problem. This team still isn't good at defend at coverage over the middle. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, I, I think what it is, is it's that quarterback syndrome that I'm suffering from right sure. now, where I'm just looking at, I'm, I'm looking at the NFL and I'm looking at the Lions roster specifically, and you see Jared Goff and you circle that name and then you put him up against whatever quarterback or quarterbacks Andy Dalton. Lions oh. are going to be playing. 
Hey, I. All right, what do we think? Do we think Andy Dalton will be starting Week Four? No. By Week no, Four, no, 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 no. 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 Okay. no. <laughs> so I mean, it. Uh, that's that's why I circle a game like the Eagles because it's Jalen Hurts or you know. Gardner Minshew, I don't know, whoever's going to be under center for the Eagles. Or no flat if it's if it's the Denver Broncos, it's I, I, I don't want to disparage the Teddy Bridgewater name, but it's Teddy Bridgewater or it's Drew Locke. Or, it, it's know, Teddy the, Bridgewater, a bridge to a better quarterback. But then you just look, I don't know, I think you just look at the rest of the schedule and it's like, I, I, don't, I don't see anything where I would say the Lions are going to win that game. Okay, well, yeah, that I agree with that. But I just, I just think Upsets happen, and this team is capable of up. I don't think this team is incapable of, of upsets. I don't. Well, and of yeah, beating and, teams that are better than them, I think they could. And we know this season is going to be a war of attrition. So we we do this every year at the beginning of predictions, where it's like, hey, you know, every team is healthy in our in our heads right now. And you know, when we when right. the Lions right. play the Cardinals in week six, fifteen or whatever, like week fourteen, they're going to be all healthy. Who knows? I mean, the Cardinals could have four wins themselves at that point. We don't know. I mean, hell, by the time we play the Vikings, half the team could probably be out for with COVID because of Kirk Cousins doesn't want to get vaccinated. Who knows? Talk about good quarterback play, though. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, this season's going to be so weird. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, we got to revisit the state of the pride from last from last month, set some new ones. And yeah, keep looking forward to this game. It's Sunday is coming up really quick and there's plenty to do on the pride of Detroit POD cast. So we will be right back. Mm. Mm, dysentery. <laughs> All right. You get to alerts. Cause I need to turn my uh, AC back on. Okay. I thought I would turn it off for the sound and now it's really hot in here, especially with the mask on. We got what, like a four, Level four hype train somewhere in there. We had a bunch of follows before the show. I'll get to them first. DCW 57 lines. Thank you for the follow. Gen W. Thank you for the follow. Kobe the goat. Thank you for the follow. Chavi Frino. Thank you for the follow. Blommer. Andrew Keens. Thanks for your follows. Hope you stick around. Hopefully you get those notifications on your phone every time we go live. Because spoiler alert, we might have two things tomorrow for you. Two. Maybe. Maybe. I don't want to spoil either of them. Uh, Wizard comes in at the very beginning of the show with the six months. Says, can't wait for the season to start. Let's go. Brennan comes in with the 11 months at tier two. Says 11 months strong. Game week two, baby. Brennan, appreciate you. Then we got respected man man gifting a sub to Neural Hash. Thank you for the gifted sub. Then, yeah, Detroit dropped what I believe with the 10 bomb. Let me double check that. Yeah, a 10 bomb from Yeah Detroit. Always, always appreciate the, the support from Yeah Detroit. One of our bigger uh, supporters here on the podcast. Respected Man Man subscribed himself 15 months in a row, 16 total. Yeah Detroit. Oh, that was just the rest of his 10 bomb. Sorry. <laughs> Harry Colon, oh, I... thank you for the follow. <laughs> Fun slushy dropped 40 bits. I am Tyler followed. Matt Stewie followed. And then Pittman 70 with the eight months. Says go Lions. Before we get to our, our in-between segment stuff. Yes, I'll, I'll put on the shirt. Relax. Also, let me let me chill out for a minute. This month is September. Or as they call it on Twitch. September. September. Which means gifted subs. Subs to yourself. 20% off. $5 sub is now $4. Four, five gifted subs. Now you can get six gifted subs for the same price. Just something to think about. I don't know what this is, but we're doing it. It's thinking about it. It's, it's about sending it. ESP waves to think about it, Jeremy. Okay. Our, our good friend, Dan Pask. How do we stop the Texans from drafting Malik Willis? Very carefully. Bingo. So interesting notes about the first week of NCAA football, as everyone has decided apparently that there are no good quarterbacks because yep, like, none. one week of play, even though like, I don't feel like those people stayed up and watched Carson strong at all. So, you know, Matt Coral playing tonight, but you know, Sam Howell for the goes and meets a uh, crowd for the first time in two years in Blacksburg and that's horror and that's like enough to for everyone to bail on him 
Spencer Rattler wins, but doesn't look insane, and everyone's bailing on him. Yeah, it seems like, like the people only, are overreacting. The only court. Oh, of course they are. It's one. No, week. it's but but like I don't think people realize how stupid Week One is in NCAA football. Like, if you think Week One in the NFL is weird, NCAA is stupid. Uh, NCAA football Week One is pants on head stupid. Like weird things happen. I think Wisconsin's still a much better team than Penn State, but they still lost them on Week One. I think Oklahoma is much better than a five point win over Tulane. I don't think Georgia is great, but hey, they win with no defensive touchdown under Clemson. Everyone's starting to put them at number two in the country already. Like dumb things happen in week one. There's no preseason. These guys are raw. These guys are just figuring things out. And and they didn't have crowds last year, Jeremy. They didn't have like, yeah. there, there was a lot of these games where, again, I, I point to UNC on the road at Virginia Tech with an insanely hostile crowd. Like that matters more in college and it matters when it's been two years since they've seen that kind of crap. And I think what drives me particularly insane about the quarterback conversation is that like we, we, for some reason we allow rookie quarterbacks and young players in the NFL. Oh, they need time to develop, but we have decided definitively that none of these college quarterbacks are going to get better. They're definitively bad. They're not going to make it in the NFL. (laughs) And it's just ridiculous. Like these guys are even younger. They have even more place to develop. They're learning more about, you know, high level of competition rather than high school joke of a football type stuff. And it's just, it's silly to me. And and we're all, I mean, this happens every year, so we shouldn't act surprised that there's week one overreactions, but yeah, here we are. Well, I think in the case of Sam Howell, he is a veteran like quarterback in college, but still like, you kind of expected that result going into Virginia Tech. That's that's a good team in, in Blacksburg. And a utterly insane crowd. Like, if you watch that crowd, th- those are people just... Ha- who have all lost their mind. So, uh, I wait and see more. Oh, that's all I'll say. Malik Willis still looked really good in week one. But we're I, not going to talk about that. No, we can't. Because <laughs> I, of anybody, understands that this is going to be like... <clears throat> this is going to be a marathon. It's not a sprint. Because if it was a sprint, Zach Wilson wouldn't have been the second overall pick in the NFL draft. <laughs> if if player development didn't matter, then why was Trey Lance the third overall pick? I mean, this stuff it it, I think, it takes I the think entire season. Is- like especially because I'm not gonna make any sweeping conclusions about Malik Willis because he played Mike Minter's Campbell team. Campbell. Like that's <laughs> can can anyone in chat tell me where Campbell College is right now? Or Campbell I don't know if it's Campbell College or Campbell University. And it and if and if you do, you're cheating because you Googled it. But <laughs> the, the the thing Just is is to like, make sure it is Campbell University. There you go. So I um I I mean I liked a lot of what I saw from Malik Willis. He had two he had two bad throws. One was a turnover worthy play on a screen play that was about right until he got baited. And then there was a bad throw on third down on a slant. But other than that, I mean, his first quarter, he looked like he should have been the first quarterback drafted like right now. He's yeah. making insane throws. And Carson Strong beats up on Cal's defense, which I mean, on one hand, you just look at that and you shrug because it's Cal, but it's also Nevada beating up a Pac-12 school. Like, and and, and Jeremy and Jeremy didn't care at all about the quarterback play because he was too busy watching Oregon and watching his man get down and dirty. <laughs> you know, hopefully he doesn't have a uh, serious ankle have a serious injury, injury you yeah. know, or anything like that. I don't know. I, feel, I, I think I think the walking boot was precautionary, but I I feel like I have to issue some sort of like spiritual apology to uh, Muhammad Ibrahim Ibrahim of uh, Minnesota. Yeah. Because I was gushing over him for his play for about like a half, and Everyone today was. it comes out that he's got season-ending yeah. surgery well, was, on his leg. It was a rough, rough week for injuries. I mean, you know, not to yeah. to keep it at home, but Bell for Michigan, like their best defense, best offensive player, team captain, suffers a knee injury. His season is over, and 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 Thibodeau, yeah, has a has some sort of ankle injury, and you know, I don't know if it's. Hopefully it's not a high ankle because that that thing can linger for a long time. But walking boot isn't great, and the, and they I mean they almost lost that game, so they could have used him. It wasn't like eh we got this game in the bag, let's sit him. They they were in trouble. 
when he was out of that game. By the way, I know I know nobody watched. I'm going to keep going to back to the Nevada game because I know nobody watched it on the East Coast because it finished at like 2 a.m. Carson Strong had like 300 yards in that game. <laughs> you are just beat that. I don't even know who Carson Strong is, if I'm being completely honest. He's, he's He was on quarterback list. It's just he plays for Nevada, which means Mountain West, which means a lot of games where, where most people on the East Coast are going to be asleep. Oh, okay, so here comes the East Coast bias thing, huh? Yes, I will do it. They're making a four-part documentary series about the Mets, Jeremy. You can't tell me that East Coast bias doesn't exist. Who is they? ESPN. A four-part fucking documentary series in the 86 Mets. Didn't we just spend time last podcast talking about how ESPN televised a fake school? Playing, <laughs> we did. A, le- playing a legitimized fake school? <laughs> <laughs> Where did the fake school... Was the fake school on the West Coast? On the, on no, the fake, fake West Coast? No, Bishop Sycamore, I think, from was, the Midwest, floating around, from it was floating Ohio, around Ohio, Ohio right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and IMG Academies in Florida, I think. Like all good businesses. <laughs> Boom, there it is. More of the East Coast bias at work, Jeremy. No, yes, Neither right. of them West Coast teams. <laughs> Although they were kind enough to uh, start uh, beating uh, beating the drum on. You know how we don't like when people point out that uh, Matthew Stafford and Clayton Kershaw went to the same high school? ESPN could not wait to talk about California high schools with uh, Georgia Clemson. It's like, ooh, modern day. Mm, mm. And uh, St. Saint- John Bosco. Mm. Nobody's going to get that unless they live nope. down in California. I have no idea what you're talking those are like, about. Like, those, are the, those are like the two big California. Like, You want to talk about putting talent from into college and thus into the NFL. St. John Bosco and modern day in Northern California. Um, did Respected Man Man, did he request a list cast? Because I saw him say list cast your favorite seasonings. <laughs> <laughs> Charbonnet looked fantastic for UCLA. Way to go, Harbaugh! Yeah. Uh, by the way, to Harbaugh, mm. didn't one of their former didn't the former Michigan quarterback like score ten touchdowns from Presbyterian College as well for an FCS record? No idea. I forget his name. What moderator? Why right. can't I remember his name? Because you're making him up. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I swear to not. Um, Ren Hen- Ren Hefley. Who is Ren Hefley? Michigan transfer. <laughs> Never even heard of it. I don't know. Respected Madman is confirming that he did indeed what? request a list cast oh, there of seasonings. Wait. Wait. Okay. There it is. 31 minutes ago. Seasonings. First, mm. let, for, before we get into it, I'll give and this will give you t- guys some time to think about it. A bunch of other subs came in while we were on break. Uh, Savvy, and I will say savvy Twitch users. First, we had Quirky Turkey, which kind of love the name, subscribing for Tier 1. First month subscribing, so welcome. Welcome to the Pride. Enjoy the ad-free experience. Enjoy getting channel points quicker than everyone else who isn't subbed. Enjoy the emotes that you get, including ones with our face on it, including him in a luchador mask, him in a, a tinfoil hat, me with a bunch of colored mustaches, plus, like, you know, other fun stuff. Plus Jamal, Jamal Williams going... Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> then we had, and this is why I'm pulling the savvy card here. We had Timothy or T T I'm sorry, T T money. The one extend his subscription all the way through April. Jeez. And I, I think what he's doing and I don't Ride know, or die. he's, he's utilizing the September and I don't know if you can have the discounted rate for all those months, all those, what I is think that? you do six, I think eight do. months. Uh, but yeah. if, if you are. Smart man. Uh, and then Line in London did the same thing through October. So two savvy Twitch users here in our Twitch chat. Then Line in London also resubbed, which I'm not sure how you resubbed and extended. But either way, smart. So on seasonings, is it just like individual pieces or are we doing like specific like, you know, mixed spice rack things, brands? I would say just the, just the, I mean, if there's a specific brand that you want to tout for, go for it. But I feel like we're just talking no, no, about, I think you're right. Just, just so, individuals. Yeah. I was going to say, was it the question of, is, is it okay to say taco seasoning or there's so many things that go into taco seasoning that we're talking about the individual. So I'm, doing, I'm doing individual elements myself. 
but you okay. can do you can do like a full seasoning if you want because um i don't know if they have it on the east coast i'd hope they do it's called chef marito and it is like the chef marito chicken seasoning is like the best stuff you can put on your chicken mm. sounds good uh really quick we'll give you guys some more time to think about it and i did jason i did refund your your uh channel point thing because i am already wearing the mozzarella stick shirt so you got that eight thousand channel points back then we had crash and earn with the seven months using that twitch prime again if you don't want to subscribe with the september you could just use that twitch prime for free if you have amazon prime link it to your twitch account boom free sub once a month to any of your favorite twitch users you only get yeah. one per month yeah um yeah. but that's what matt cicc did use his twitch prime four months now subscribe to the channel thank you for coming back appreciate that i, I see captain james kirk says don't purchase sub tokens through the twitch app you won't get the 20 percent discount make sure you purchase that <clears throat> on your computer browser that is also mm, sad yeah. if you're if you're subbing i would never recommend to do it on mobile um I, the, the twitch token things the sub tokens are always a little bit more expensive, I think. So yeah, get the deal. Go on a uh, go on a laptop. Go on a, a PC. Go on your Apple, whatever. Definitely do it uh, on your on your PC because you'll save a little cash. And we don't see any that all that extra money that you're paying that goes to Twitch that doesn't go to us. So yeah, fuck Twitch. That no, that's no. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized, by the way, we streamed on the day everyone was supposed to not stream on Twitch last week. No, we were what you, we were scabs. We scabbed. We crossed the picket line, Jeremy. Well, does it does it count if we were just oblivious to it? Yeah, I think I that that's my excuse. We can we claim were. ignorance. Yeah. Sorry. You know what? Yesterday, yesterday we, what we were protesting. We we didn't stream. <laughs> we were belated to the protest. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, I've got my list. How many? To, how many did you do? Five. And okay. I, I will be honest. There are some that I really want to put on here. I could probably go to ten if I get if I gave myself more time. All right, go ahead. I need to let me. Okay, uh, let me let me. Uh, okay, I think I've got the order in mind too. All right. So number five, cloves. Very, very utilitarian. You can use them for a lot of different cooking, but cloves is definitely on there. Um, you can use it for kind of a sweeter medley or even kind of just a spiced one, but cloves, very, very useful. Number four is smoked paprika or just straight up paprika. Either way, like very useful, smoky flavor. Love it. Uh, number three, Alex has been, hold on. Alex has been streaming. No, this was, this was last week. There was like, we streamed on like what a Wednesday or something. And it was, there was like something about hate, um, Something about like hate raids that we weren't supposed to stream about. E either way, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, number three, ghost pepper infused sea salt. Oh, I'm going a little fancy on this one, but I had it one. I got it one time from uh, one of the spice. I forget the name of the spice vendor online, but ghost pepper infused sea salt will make your wings like insanely good. Okay. Number two, and I'm saying this mostly because I've been making Mapo tofu the last few nights and I'm about to make some again. Uh, Szechuan peppercorns. Uh, if you're not familiar with Szechuan spices, like not only is it gets you some good heat, but it will numb your tongue and you get this, it's this like specific, I forget what it's called. It's like mala, but it's like a specific sensation of your tongue being numbed, but also getting a lot of spice to it. So I got a shout out to Szechuan peppercorns. And number one is garlic. Garlic is not as awesome as a flavor it's you use it in almost everything and I wouldn't be caught dead in my kitchen without at least some gar some like garlic powder or some fresh bulbs ready to cut up and use. Okay. Okay. Jeremy, you need some more time putting yours in order or what? I feel like I'm pretty good. I, I think I'm good. Okay. I will, I will give you right there. Uh, I'm right there with Ro roar of the lions, by the way, take every recipe and double the amount of garlic. For that. <laughs> yeah go ahead jeremy uh all right number five seasoning salt yes lowry's little underrated you can so literally good. put it on any meat i mean it's, it's a great like dry my rub. mom is my mom's a big believer in lowry's I'm, absolutely I'm right there with you yeah 
Especially like just do Lowry's on French fries, right? Like in yeah. the yeah. you don't yeah. you don't need any condiments to dip in it or anything like that. Nope. Yeah. <clears throat> Chili powder is my number four. Also quite versatile. Throw it in, you know, your your chicken rubs, throw it in your chili. Sorry, I, I zoned out. What it. was the number four? Chili powder. Chili powder, okay, okay. Number three, paprika. I'm right there with you, Chris. Paprika, nice little smoky so flavored flavorful. anything. I'll throw it on eggs. So I'll throw flavorful. it on yeah. meats. I'll throw it on toast. I don't care. Paprika belongs on everything. Mm-hmm. Number two, lemon pepper. Ooh. It's not it's not as versatile, but it's so damn good. But when you do utilize it, properly. yes, yes, it's it's so good. By I, the way, I don't I don't know if it's going to make any of our lists, but like black pepper is. Imagine where we would be without black pepper in our lives. I, I don't want to. No, we're good. I don't want to imagine yeah. that. Yeah. And then my number one, very similar to yours, garlic, salt. Mmm. Which I mean, it's See, just. I like, usually buy. I usually buy garlic powder, but I can mm. respect the garlic salt too. Yeah. I I just I like garlic salt a little bit better. I have both, and and big. That's fair. Big things of both, and I also have that like. That jar with the blue label, I don't remember what it is, of just like minced garlic. That's huge. And I've had, you know, I just <laughs> take spoonfuls of it pretty much with everything I make. Mm-hmm. So that's my list. Uh, okay. All right. I can do this. I can do this. And I can feel confident about it. Number five is going to be black peppercorn. Okay. Just straight up. You need it. When it's in when it's you in the it. grinder, it's so much better too than like yeah, you know you fresh the, grind it up. Yeah. Yeah, fresh ground do you pepper. Ever, do you ever use peppercorns without grinding it up in a recipe? Is that a thing? Uh, I've so heard I, it. I don't know. I think I've heard so about that. What I sometimes I'll take it and I'll crack it very coarsely. Like I won't crack it in the grinder, but I'll like hand crush it and then put it like if I'm doing like seared peppercorn tuna, ahi tuna, like I want it very coarsely ground. Yeah, people are saying Remember, you use it for pickling. Apparently, oh yeah, you do. You use full peppercorns for pickling. Yeah, yeah. I, I, really I almost want to replace cloves. By the way, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I I almost want to replace cloves on my list with ginger. But ginger. actually, yeah, I'm gonna do that. If, if you'll allow me to do that, nope, I won't. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. It's already yeah. It's already locked. We've in. already submitted the papers. Damn. So five <laughs> black peppercorn, four cilantro. I love cilantro. Mm. Cilantro is so good, Some especially when, like, when it's, it's when it's used just right in salsa. It makes salsa the best thing in the world, and I'm so totally with Putty from Seinfeld. Like, why can't dip be a meal? I, I'm I could glad eat a I don't salsa if the cilantro is hitting. I'm glad I don't have that thing because some people have that thing where cilantro just tastes, tastes like soap, soap for yeah. them. I'm I'm yeah. glad I don't have that because cilantro, along with like rosemary and thyme and. Uh, and basil, like just great basil. herbs. Mm-hmm. Kind of think you I don't like put basil? basil. No, I should have put basil on my list. Mm. I almost don't. Consider I have a question. I have a question for you guys afterwards. Okay. We want to hear the rest of Ryan's list. That was four, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number three. Ah oh, man, it's so good. Bay leaves, like when they're used in like soups and stuff like that, like they're a game changer. That was my question. I was going to ask how you guys felt about bay leaves because sometimes I use them and I wonder if I'm doing anything with them, but maybe I'm too stupid to really. I throw them in just in I, case. But I feel like you have. I feel like you have to go extra on them. See, I, I, I would. I was probably, gonna... probably put in like mul- two or three. I need. I need a taste test. I want a bay leaf taste test. T- t- uh, taste test because I. I have the same skepticism that Chris does. I don't think they're doing anything. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure I believe I, I don't see, here's the thing. You are, a, you, you believe that they're not doing anything. I believe it's doing something, but I can't tell you what they're doing. <laughs> I'm just throwing them in just because it's tradition. I'm throwing out bay leaves. Cause now I'm skeptical. <laughs> I, I, throw skepticism, I throw bay leaf skepticism into yeah. this chat. Did we Sorry. Know? Number three, number three is gone. I'm allowed <laughs> to do it. Chris isn't number three for me is, is number three for me is cinnamon. Like Ooh, talk about versatility. Yeah. See, yeah, that's why I like, put cloves in there because cinnamon plus cloves, and then mm-hmm. you make like uh, just mm, mm. yeah, yeah. You just think about all the good things that cinnamon can do. Number two, this is cheating, I think, but Trader Joe's everything but the sesame bagel <laughs> seasoning. I 
the only reason I know that even exists is because every single person on TikTok slash Instagram is in love with this thing. Don't say it. I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I know you. <laughs> I know that's where you found out about it. But so I'm reading right now just to make sure I cover all of it. So sesame seeds, poppy seeds, dried garlic, onion, and sea salt flakes. Uh, which I mean, come on, can't go wrong with any of that. That's kind of. And then number that, one, that's five spices in one. You cheated. Well, that's no, like it's like choosing your favorite rap. I mean, like that's your favorite rappers, called, and you go like, well, all right, number one. two is Wu Tang Clan, so I get all of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but uh, Lowry's was a really good answer, and so was lemon pepper. And I would totally revise my list, but I'm already four fifths of the way through it. Number one, <laughs> Old Bay seasoning. People love that one. I haven't had Old Bay I, seasoning. I, I am out on Old Bay seasoning. I'm in I'm on out. Old Bay seasoning. Like lots of it. Copious amounts of it. It tastes like it tastes like a, a, a an old sweatshirt. <clears throat> what <laughs> What okay, I'm I'm reading it's a it's a mix of celery salt, black pepper, crushed red pepper flakes. Ooh, that's one we probably should have considered too. Crushed pe- red pepper. Yeah. Red pepper but, flakes is one of those that I like <clears throat> you need it for Italian cooking. I just couldn't find a room for it on my list. Like I'm number surprised five, you didn't put you, oregano. Why didn't you put oregano? Well, listen, that number five where I had like cloves, ginger <laughs> Red peppers and oregano was also in there. Like it's say, so you, hard to figure. Are you even Italian? Yes. Or is that? <laughs> I'm up and down on oregano itself sometimes. Like oregano with other things, but as an Italian, you're down on oregano. Are you okay? See, I think I think I've made. I think oregano's. I think I've had some bad oregano before, but I don't want to talk about that. So random Xerox mentioned Creole seasoning, and I. I had to run and Ooh, go Tony get Tony Shacheri's. Yeah. What did you just say? Tony Shacheri's. Yeah. Boom. I've never had this before. I got it at the supermarket so today good. and so I don't good. know what to use it for, but I'm very excited. Like this, this is chicken. how you can tell Put I'm old meat. is I'm excited about a seasoning that I got at the grocery store. Spice rack. Yeah. You're dude, excited that makes spice you rack. so old. That makes you <laughs> so okay, old. Boomer. Okay. Boomer. Okay. Like, but what do I, it, it, literally, I, it literally says great on everything on the, on the box, on the bottle, yeah, whatever. Yeah, what what do right. I put it on though? Eggs, meat, chicken, fish. You know what you should do Derek, right now, though? Derek is saying, put it on some potatoes sometimes. Okay. What okay. you should do right now on stream is you should put it on your finger and give us a live instant reaction. Should I? I and think that's out, that's a lot good of, idea. From, I mean, it, I, I think a lot of it is cayenne pepper with other season, with other spices. So. Oh, hey, it, Alien says mot sticks. Put them on mot sticks. Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> Just to, Seasoning like, like the, well the, the, the seal has not even been cracked yet. This is That's the seal right there. Yeah, it's only season. Okay, that stuff. was embarrassing. I'll put it. I'll put it way above old. Oh, there we go. How old are we? Are we? Are we unboxing seasoning <laughs> Ooh, right now? I shouldn't have inhaled. That. <laughs> Stings like the nostrils. This. I like this. Uh, Ooh, putting it on Brussels sprouts is a fantastic. I love this, Brussels sprouts. This is the coloring. It's very hard to see, but it's where little, is uh, it's where is Mrs. Is it like Ruby a little? Right is it like kind of like brownish? Where is? Yeah. Are you doing this for Mrs. Ruby? Is she streaming right now? No, she streams on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wait, mm. but in the afternoon now. Ooh, that's got a kick to it. Ooh, I like it though. Mmm, yeah, I'm in. I'm putting that in everything. What, now. That's on what's my your? Toast. I was gonna say, but what? What's your first instinct? Where are you gonna? What are you gonna put it on first? It definitely seems like a, a good dry rub meat type of thing, but like I could, I, I literally think I could sp- sprinkle this on toast and like it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Sorry, but Tabasco is a seasoning, so I mean, I, I... Tabasco is like, too much for me. I like, like I'm a, Tabasco, I'm a Frank's, but I'm a Frank's I, guy. I went for stuff that I'm going to use in a lot of different dishes. I don't I, hot sauce doesn't count as a spice though to me it's not a spice it's a it's a condiment right no I agree I mean I used it in more cooking than versus other hot sauce uh Worcester sauce yes very good I'm actually going to do something so now I'm about to become the old one here and I don't have any of the cool cameras that Mrs. Ruby does but <clears throat> this week I am going to make my own uh, beef jerky Ooh. And I do have my Worcester sauce lined up for that. I've been on mm. a big Tapatio kick lately. Mm. 
I think one of the things that makes me the oldest is that of anything that I can put on fries, I want it to be malt vinegar. Whoa. I've never been. I'll do that yet. if I'm having chips. I'm doing that yeah. if it's like fish and chips. They have to be thick do, fries, I'll, right? Like, otherwise yeah, you're getting yeah. really, really I, I soggy. Would, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, it's, me... I think it's best with waffle fries because they have like the strongest integrity of like any of the fries. They don't break I... easily. Nice and fortified. You guys are going to think a lot less of me, but I really like good mayonnaise with fries. I'm not mad about that because I, I make fancy sauce, mayo and ketchup. <laughs> I, uh, I was thinking sauce? about mayonnaise. I was thinking yeah. about mayonnaise the other day because there was that guy on college game day who like oh, covered himself. God. Oh, my mayo. God. <laughs> I was really that, I don't I don't know why everybody on my timeline had to talk about that. Like I don't know why everybody had well, to quote tweet it and, me, and weigh in on a man pouring mayo the, all over the himself. Only thing that it reminds me, of me, team now. <laughs> I did. The only the only thing that that reminded me of was there used to be a channel called Regular Ordinary Swedish Meal Time way back on uh, YouTube that kind of popped up the same time as Epic Meal Time. And the Swedish guy who was on it, his big shtick was every time they did a recipe, he would take a massive spoonful of mayonnaise and eat it. And the camera would be right up on his face as he's chewing it. And then he'd go, it's good for you. <laughs> the things that you share, Chris. <clears throat> Some of the things. <laughs> uh, big Aries asks, how much for Jeremy to recreate that for charity? Um, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, that's a, that's a waste of mayonnaise. Well, that that would I be mean, one of the more appealing cute. parts for me to do it is to well, waste I mean, mayonnaise because it's horrible. Oh come on! Oh come on! You, have you ever had Kewpie? Kewpie mayonnaise? Like you got to get non-American Q-B? mayonnaise. Kewpie. It's like the big Japanese brand of mayonnaise. Mm. That's your answer, down. But it's like just get the Japanese every, version. No, but like, on <laughs> honest. To, <laughs> This isn't a fucking weeb thing. This is a weeb thing that I'm trying to do. Ranch over mayo? No. Absolutely. Well, okay, the bus stop. Hold up, hold up. We're hard stop. Hard stop. Ranch is not better than mayonnaise. As somebody who puts their wings in ranch, and I know that disgusts both of you, I'm even upset by that take. Mayo <laughs> over ranch every day of the week. Duke's mayo? I'm not a big on Duke's mayo, so I do. I get the, like no mir- No Miracle Whip like- either. Oh, Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip's no. nasty. I do, I do Hellman's. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get, so it's called Best Foods Out. Like, it's kind of like a Carl's Jr. Hardee's or a Rally's Checkers split. Apparently, Hellman's mm. out here is called Best Foods. It's like oh, the same okay. thing, but they have to do a different brand when you're west of the Rockies. That's one to grow on. I, I don't remember former Lion Harry Colon. <laughs> I remember Harry Colon. Is that real? <laughs> or is he just trying to get literally everyone on this podcast to say Harry Colon because he no, has? No, he's a real football. He's a real football player. <laughs> oh, I guess he was. Wow, not even that long ago. I guess I should have. Yeah, he was in the 90s. Hmm. Oh, he had two different stints with the Lions. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, Zach. Yeah, okay. Zach. No, Zach Kadolf. Mm-hmm. I think he asked, when do the POD season record predictions come out? Great, great question. They great come out question. this week Friday. towards the end of, end, of, end of the week, huh? Yeah. Friday. Our offensive, our offensive MVPs are already out on the site right now. <clears throat> yep. It'll go and... offensive MVP, defensive MVP. I want to say rookie of the year is probably next. Mm-hmm. What's after that? I think that's season. Oh, NFC North. That. No, NFC, NFC North. North. NFC, NFC North, North winner. Record prediction, and then six on Saturday. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. There's one more prediction to go after that. Did we all have? Uh, does everyone? Does all three of us? Did we have T.J. Hawkinson, or did you have someone? Because I know I had T.J. I know Jeremy had T.J. Ryan, who did you? Ryan have went the boring offensive lineman route. Oh, he went Frank Rag. Now that's right. Yeah. Me and Eric Schlitt. I like being on the side of Eric Schlitt. <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's a place. That's a place I like to be. The, I don't know. I, I I just felt like everybody was going to say Hawkinson, and yeah. I think that it's going to yeah, be so. Yeah, I was so trying to talk important. myself out of it, but I mean, I couldn't. I, I guess the the reason why I talked myself out of it is because I thought about how important Frank Rag now is going to be to like the success of Jared Goff. Yeah, I, I wasn't even thinking that's offensive fair. line at that point. If I had, I would have maybe said like Taylor Decker. 
I think you can also make the same argument for what I just said about Ragnow that for yeah. TJ Hawkinson, like he's going to be his number one option when it comes to throwing the ball. So true. Will there be a Madden yeah, Sim on Saturday? Yes, there will be. Of course, Ooh, yeah. every Saturday Ooh, morning Madden. we're gonna we're gonna be in our normal time slot for the season, which is ten thirty a.m. Saturday mornings. There'll be a post on Pride Detroit Friday on Friday to to remind you. But yeah, a Madden twenty two sim, or maybe, nonetheless. Maybe we'll put the post on set. No, we'll put it Friday night. <clears throat> um, are we doing superlatives? Um, other than the ones that we just named, no. I don't think there are any plans. Unless I don't think we had any written up for this one. We can maybe do some during the next break just for fun. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm really distracted with Ruby laying on his back right now. <clears throat> He's, uh, can't really see it right here, but he is uh, really... We can just, see it here. I'll, He's I'll, with all my I'll laundry on there the floor right now. Yeah. <clears throat> He's kind of... Yeah, you can see that with all the laundry I've thrown on the floor. So that's always good. See my <laughs> nasty ass apartment. Um, after a, after a weekend of working just hellish overnights. Yeah, why don't why don't we do that? So, so next break, and you guys can think of them now. Think of superlatives that you want to say. So like, play you know most improved player or you know player most likely to lead the team in touchdowns or whatever. Yeah. Those sort of categories. You throw them at us in Twitch chat during the next break. We'll th- we'll give you your answers. In a in a lightning round uh break talk. And there will be scraps this week. I know we've kind of missed it the last few weeks again, but um just he's we we we're gonna have them all every week now. Cause we need to kick ass on the downloads. You just want to scratch his belly? Ruby is pretty good about letting you pat his belly. He he does like belly pats. He's very unique among cats like that. One of my friends from Texas once said that cats, you can't pet their bellies. And I sent him a video of me rubbing Ruby's belly. I saw people enjoying my invisible cup as well. Yes, it is. It is. It is green. (laughs) Hopefully by the weekend, I'm going to have my own green screen back in place. I need to make some runs to target this week, but. um... Segment number two. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Like We've got quite a bit says. coming up on what? Two two. What's up? Nice. <laughs> I know, but I'm also doing mine anyway. Okay. <clears throat> Boom. Boom. Exclamation point. Pet Ruby. Pet uh, Zazu or Zazu pet, pet goo. Goose. goose. Goo. Pet goo. 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 Goose. By the way, someone on Twitter sends in, since discovering Ancho, I use it to season my food instead of pepper. Ancho chili is a Ancho chili pepper is a pretty good one. That's from Jay Z fighting the duopoly. I don't know what Ancho is. Oh, that looks it's like, like it's uh, gonna kick my ass, but I kinda like it. No, it's it's more smoky than spicy. Uh, so it's just a poblano chili that's been either dried or smoked or something. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're very good. I, I have a rack of that in my in my cupboard. I don't use it too much, but when I really need some smoky stuff, I usually throw a little bit in with the paprika. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, the season preview continues on the Pride of Detroit POD cast. We are fired up, ready to go, and using up all the energy we can while the Lions record still sits at a perfectly balanced zero and zero before uh, hell kicks in. But we're going to, we're going to face this uh, season with um, irony and gusto and fun. This is a science project and we're all aboard. We're all in the beaker getting washed away by hydrochloric acid. Anyway, uh, back in August, we did what we called our first state of the pride where right before the preseason hits, We decided we were going to say what the Lions have worked on during the offseason, how much they've accomplished that, and then we asked what what they need to show us in the preseason. Now, preseason being preseason, I don't think a lot of these came true, which is kind of the the dangers of the preseason. But I have here what each of us wanted to see out of Lions between August and September. I'm going to read them back to us. So I'll start with Jeremy. Jeremy, back in August said, I need to see the offense's identity. He said the defense is playing with a lot of swagger. 
in training camp at that time, but the offense isn't really having as much fun. You wanted to see about what Jared Goff is. He needs to win you. You, you, he needs to win me over says Jeremy. And uh, yeah, that's and the, and the wide receivers. On that need. Last point. Wide receivers too. Yeah. The wide receivers need to win you over. Obviously on Jared Goff, we didn't see much of him. So we'll throw that one right out the bat. What about everything else though? I, I feel like I have to throw everything off. Like, uh, I mean, we didn't, we saw the first string offense for two series in the preseason and listen there. Uh, I think I, I was expressing some concern last month because the, the defense was playing with a lot of swagger and the offense wasn't. Unfortunately, we just didn't get it. And I, I think I, I was looking for some sort of savior from the passing game. Jared Goff wasn't it. The wide receivers weren't, you know, really separating themselves from each other. And so that's what I was hoping to see. And I didn't get any of that. And I come, I, I come into the regular season with probably even more concerns about the offense than I did before, because as we saw, the Lions didn't have a wide receiver. We don't, we, we still don't really know who the number two wide receiver in this team is. It's probably Khalif Raymond. But if you were going to tell me back in August that Khalif Raymond would, would be your de facto number two wide receiver, I'd be like, oh no. What happened? <laughs> and and I mean oh, the line no. the lines trade for a guy, the lines get a guy on waivers. I mean that's that that tells you all you need to know about this wide receiving core. Like no one in camp did what they wanted them to do. And so you're left with with Khalif Raymond, you're left with Tyrell Williams, Amon Ra- like the only optimism really coming out of out of that group is Amon Ra St. Brown. That's it. Like the sun god. That's that's your optimism. And all that the the other things I'm I'm clinging to, and we won't really know this, and and we weren't going to figure it out in the in the preseason anyways. Is can a run game salvage this offense? And maybe maybe that's that's me jumping ahead to things that I need to see in September. I need to see if a run game can salvage this offense because we didn't get any DeAndre Swift in the preseason. Um, we we barely got any success. I mean, the, I, I guess maybe that's another positive that we got from the preseason is I, I feel pretty comfortable with the running back depth. Like even, even if Swift goes out, Iguabuke had a really nice preseason and made the team. Jamar Jefferson looked pretty good in camp. Didn't get a ton out of him in, in the regular season or in the preseason. But yeah, I, I, I need, I need this defense to carry this team. Cause to me, I, I just don't think they're going to get it out of their passing game. And, and part of it is a, a lack of confidence in golf. Part of it is a lack of confidence I would say a large portion of it is a lack of confidence in the wide receiving group. And then part of it is like, okay, well, you can't just completely rely on TJ Hawkinson. He can't be your, he can't be 80% of your targets. He can't be 80% of your offense. Teams are going to get wise to that. So there has to be some other option. And I guess the best way to mitigate all that damage is a run game. And we still don't know what the lines got there. Yeah, I think you you mentioned Amon Ross St. Brown, and it just seems like his connection with golf is just farther ahead, but that's really all that separates him. And he is still... A rookie and a, and a mid round rookie at that. So there's going to be limitations to what he can do. And it feels like a lot of his comfort with, with golf is, I don't know, was it mostly from the outside or was it from the slot? I mean, you can kick him both Mo- ways. Mostly slot. I th- he's going to start in yeah, the slot, I would say, slot, but yeah, he, he, you might yeah. see him on the outside a little bit as well, but like he's, he's mostly there just again, because just golf seems, seems to be the most comfortable with them right now. Yeah. And that's really about it. Uh, Ryan, you want said, I want to see what happens when turbulence hits. There's going to be downs, adversity that this team will face early on. You want to see how they're going to react. Now, obviously, preseason, there's not a ton of turbulence to talk about, but there were definitely moments in the preseason that uh, Lions backs were up against the wall. So what did you see? They definitely flew through some, some shaky weather, I, I think. And specifically, it was with, a couple of players that the Lions are expecting to be huge contributors and to be productive as soon as possible in order for them to be a competitive football team. And one of them, obviously, that jumped off the page was Panay Sewell. And the struggles that he had in the preseason were magnified. They were blown up to, you know, 100 times magnification. And it was something that I don't think a lot of us were expecting. I think a lot of us were expecting a much more polished Panay Sewell and somebody who was ready to plug in and, and solidify that team or, you know, the solidify that offensive line. 
And it, it's obvious that things are going to take some time. And it wasn't only just Panay Sewell. It was Jeff know, it was Vitae. Yeah. Well, so that was going to be Sorry. my next guy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. But but I think to Okuda, yeah. you see the opposite. So Okuda has that really rough play, right? And one of the things that I really gained out of this preseason were the comments from the coaching staff. And I think that that perspective is going to be so key in having these young players progress, but it was the comments that the coaching staff made about, I'm not focusing on the one bad play that Jeff Okuda did. Like he, he's going to learn from that play. Let's start focusing on the good things. Let's start focusing on the improvements and the strides that he's made already as a cornerback from last year who really struggled to where he is now. Like I, that was one of the things that really encouraged me about when turbulence does hit, because that one play was being, so made to be everything of Jeff Okuda's preseason. Yeah. We're washing away all of the good things from training camp. We're washing away, you know, even game one of the preseason where, you know, you didn't hear much from the secondary at all because they did a pretty good job. And I'm encouraged by that. And I feel really good about the coaching staff. So, I mean, it, it's preseason turbulence though, right? right? Like regular season turbulence is it's much different because the games matter and they start to count. And, the fans get louder, and, and, and that's what happens. So, you know, it, it's going to take a few weeks, but I'm I'm encouraged by what I've seen in the preseason. They're, like, I think I think there's something tangible that I can take from the preseason and say that that's that's the kind of coaching staff that I want leading a rebuild and, and a really young team. I, I, want, I want to build off that a little bit, too, because, you know, the cornerback position specifically with, with Okuda there is it's all about bouncing back, right? Like, you ask Aaron Glenn, you ask Aubrey Pleasant, they'll tell you court cornerbacks get beat. The best ones get beat all the time, but the only way that you're good is if you rebound for them. You, you put those plays behind you, 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 you wait, you, you weather the turbulence you. And, and that's, that's something that you, like you said, that's what we saw Jeff Okuda do. And he literally said like, that's what the coaches have been harping on us. You're going to give up a good play, but it's how you rebound. It's how you weather the storm that, that really defines you as a player. And so Okuda goes out, gives up a big play early on. What does he do next? Breaks up a pass from Juju Smith-Schuster. Breaks up a, a, a screen pass uh, early on. Like, he, he rebounded. He, he played through it. And that's – you're right. Like, if that can, can you know, rain over the entire defense, they make a mistake, but it doesn't, you know, snowball, That that's going to be huge for this defense because, I mean, we just talked for the whole first segment how, like, this the, – the, the record of this team could be really ugly by the time we hit November. And if, if, if they can still kind of keep that, like, next play mentality, you know, maybe maybe they do show us something impressive in, in December. And, and just one quick thing to add to that is that you look at the way that Lions defense played a year ago, or specifically, I think, just under Matt Patricia, and I think that there's so many players that you can point to and say, that player was playing timid, or that player was afraid of making a mistake. Like, yep. I, I think that that talks about Jared Davis a whole hell of a lot. Yep. I think that talks about Jeff Okuda's first season. I think that talks about the way that much. Tracy Walker, I think that's the way that Tracy Walker regressed. Um, I, I think that you get caught up in that. And I think if you have a coaching staff who believes in these players and these players aren't afraid to make mistakes because they had that Ted Lasso be a goldfish mentality, that's that's where you're going to see the improvements. And like I said, that's what's so important for a rebuilding and, and youthful football team. This all kind of dovetails into what I had in August, which was that um, I really wanted to see what we had in the defense. I wanted to see them go up against other teams, and I wanted to see what kind of competition we bring out of them. And I got to say, at the end of the day, though, it's it's a mixed bag. I think it's definitely an improvement over Patricia because, as you guys said, it's not a lot of guys playing scared. Um, I'm happy about what's up front, but that's also where a lot of the investment went in young guys like Alan, Ali McNeil, and Michael Brockers. It's it's where you know uh, you look at the but you look at the, the the defensive backs. I think there's a lot of investment in the young guys, and that's going to be a bit of a wild card. That's going to be something we're going to have to wait and see for the rest of the season on. Just how good is the upside upside on a young guy like AJ Parker or on uh, um, a Bobby Price or some of these other guys on the depth at quarterback? Um, I'm not too thrilled with Will Harris from what I saw from him in the uh in the preseason but you know as you say a lot of guys in the backfield get beat and you just have to bounce back from that linebackers still remain the uh the big question still remain the big question mark especially as we um 
as we look for someone who can help out in in coverage over the middle but i think where this team is going to at least improve and look there's nothing there's nowhere to but improve this was by dvoa the worst graded uh defense last year <laughs> there's nowhere to by, go by basically, but, basically uh, any measure <laughs> by by literally every measure but i think i i'm at least i think impressed a little bit more on the pressure that this team is ex- exerting especially when say romeo aquara julian aquara is out there that there is some there i think up front there's going to be some room for positivity uh as you start to come farther away from the ball i start to lose a little bit of hope but uh for some of the young guys still wait and see i guess yeah the, the defense is really a fascinating group for me because it's like a whole new identity it's a whole new identity but like Okay, so the Pittsburgh game happened, and I feel like that set a lot of people's expectations back, and maybe rightfully so. Like, it was not fun to see the secondary get torched against Ben Roethlisberger. But that's the kind of offense you're going to see in the regular right. season, too. Right. You're going to see the Steelers' de- uh, offense like the Steelers. The, the tricky part for me is that defensive front, because to me, like, we're talking it up a whole lot this offseason, but we haven't really seen it yet. We haven't seen all the pieces put together yet. We haven't seen Nick Williams there in the starting lineup. We haven't seen a bunch of only McNeil next to guys that are going to start. Um, we haven't seen any of Michael Brockers in camp or in games. And, and you know, those are those are significant parts. We've barely seen Levi Onzerike. Um, we, we've seen flashes from some of those young guys, but we need to see what the, like, because I think a lot of us agree, like, Part of the reason we think the secondary is, is going to be better is because that defensive front is going to be better. It all works in harmony. And we just, we haven't seen it yet. Like, I, I see it in camp. I see Romeo Quar balling out. I see Julian Quar flashing at times with, with, with some pressure. Same with Levi. But we haven't seen them all out there in the same time. We haven't seen them, you know, face uh, a, a third and long on defense and be able to put Levi out there and Julian out, out there and Romeo out there and, and Trey Flowers out there and just have four pass rushing specialists and go. That's what I'm waiting to see. That's what I'm really excited about. And that's where I think the optimism comes out, but it still has to happen. We still haven't seen it happen. I, I, yeah. And I, I noticed you haven't talked at all about linebackers because that still remains the, um, right. and the fly in this ointment. Absolutely. No <laughs> question. Like, there are so many questions and we, again, we don't have a bunch of answers because we didn't see a lot of Alex Anzalone and we didn't see a lot of Jamie Collins in the preseason, but you know who we did see a lot of in the preseason and has a lot of people jacked up my man, Derek Barnes. And I think we're going to see him sooner and later right. and he's going to make mistakes. And it's, it's, it's the same as the secondary, right? There there's these guys that are really young. They're really, you know, untested. They haven't seen a lot of things that they're going to see in the NFL and they're going to make mistakes, but damn it. They're going to make also- some plays too. Yeah, I, I'm also I'm also curious to see what Trey I and I didn't really get my answer this preseason, but I'm curious to see what Trey Flowers is going to do with a new coaching staff that maybe better understands his strengths and weaknesses and maybe can put him in a better position. I know he says he uh, I, I know everyone, you know, noted from the last week or so that he looks more comfortable in where he is right now. But again, kind of have to see them in a regular season game. Yep, it's. I'm 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 really excited about that that front defensive front, but man, we we can't put the cart before before the horse there. Like <laughs> we have to we have to see it. Like we we keep saying, you know, the pressure is going to be there's there's going to be more sacks. There, they're going to be more interior pressure, but we got to see it first. We got to see it first. We haven't seen a yeah. lot of those guys. We don't even know for sure if Michael Brockers is is ready, but um, man, I, the the potential is, is certainly there, and I I you have to like the group of the guys there. Jeremy learned his lesson after the 2018 well, season. Yeah, I mean, how many times have we gone into the season and be <laughs> yeah, like, this defensive no, yeah. line could actually be pretty good. Like, we got snacks. We got we got Ashawn Robinson. We got Deshaun Hand. It's like, here, I mean, the good thing is, like, I just had that whole conversation without mentioning Deshaun Hand. Like, he's on IR, obviously, so he's going to miss at least three games. But, like, we, we, we aren't banking on Deshaun Hand having a turnaround season for this defensive line to, to potentially reach its potential. It's, it's good without him. Right? Mm-hmm. Potentially. Potentially. <laughs> all right. So we that's all of August. Shall we set some expectations on Stay the Pride on what we want to see out of this first month? I don't expect to come back to this every month. But I think now that we're looking at the regular season, you know, that's the State of the Pride. And it's still a lot of question marks. It's still a lot of, hey, we don't really know. But there is at least some growth and promise in a few sectors. So where do you want to see it from here? What is your priority again? 
now, Jeremy. Can can I cheat and just keep talking about the running room, or the running game? Like that's, I mean, I, I teased I mean, that's it already. The big question. Like, we we don't know what DeAndre Swift is. We right don't know now. if he's. We don't, we don't, know, know, if he's we don't know if he's healthy. We don't know if he's healthy. We don't know if if can he handle a full game's worth of 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 snaps. I don't know. But and I mean, like we we saw good stuff out of Jamal Williams a little bit in the preseason, but barely. And then the, the third. <laughs> Yeah. Barely, and then the third running back was just Jermar Jefferson trying to prove that he, you know, deserves a spot on the roster. And look, he hurdled a guy in the last game, and that's fantastic. But I don't know what it's going to be if Swift can't uh, can't be ready for game time for some of those guys. Even if he can or can't, I'm, I'm just we've been burned just like the defensive line thing. We've been we've burned so many times about like, this is the year the lines are going to have a running game. They've got Anthony Lynn. They've got, you know, a, an offensive line. That's the best it's ever been. They've got a running back in year two after he ran 4.6 yards per carry last year. It's all lined up for the lines to have a running game, but can I see it first? Can I see Deandre Swift carry a ball against an opposing defense first? Can I see how well his groin's holding up? Can I see, if, you know, the Vitae at guard for the full season, full off season, do, do we get a better result there? Can I see Jonah Jackson take a year two jump? I, I need to see it. I'm sorry. I need, I'm a results guy. I need to see it before I'm just like, the running game's back in the Detroit. We've, we have established the run. We've established the run. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm optimistic, but it also part of me thinks like this team could fall behind early and then like, what are they going to do when they can't run the ball? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Jared Goff. The answer is always Jared Goff for the entire season. Like, that's what we have to see. I think that we all got to see, I mean, one abbreviated drive, if you even want to call it that, three and out, ends with a nasty sack. And then you have the second drive, where it was a super long drive, but that could be how the Detroit Lions 2021 offense can be characterized for maybe the entire season is it lasts almost like nine, 10 minutes. It goes 11, 15 plays, but it ends in a field goal and whether or not that field goal will be made or missed remains to be seen, but this is just <laughs> going to be a team that's going to, I, I think this is going to be a team that really struggles. Like once it gets into, into scoring range, once it, once it becomes, Oh man! Once it becomes dagger time, <laughs> keep your eye. Oh, we've retired no. that, right? Oh, we've retired no. that, right? I think Hawkinson's still doing it. Um, <laughs> I, I'll say, I hope, I'll I hope say nobody's that, doing it. No one's I'll say on that note is maybe keep an eye. I'm I'm pretty sure Austin Seibert's on waiver wires for your fantasy league. So uh, <laughs> keep an eye and then decide if you don't really have a great kicker. He could be on the waiver wire in real life depending on how <laughs> one goes who knows like do you oh think after that that 18 play drive in the preseason anthony lynn was on the sideline doing uh an adam sandler impression from uncut gems and going this is how we win <laughs> <laughs> yeah this you is win, this... do you want to win with three running running uh, running plays or 18 <laughs> we just we bleed 15 minutes off the clock and maybe occasionally score a touchdown if not a field goal and try to win games 9 to 6 how did uh, how did that movie end for uh, Adam Sandler's character again? <laughs> Not, great, <Bob. laughs> Not, Not great, Bob. Not great. Not <laughs> great. Um, for me, it's I'm going to change tact and say I want to see how the coaches handle adversity. Not just not just the players, but and again, as I said, this is the month where I think Dan Campbell is finally getting a little more attention. And it's not just kneecaps, 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 kneecaps. Look at this dumb thing he did. Kneecaps, silly things from the Lions. Ha ha, they didn't keep two kickers. In the past week or two, there's been more positive stuff said about him. And I think people are finally realizing, oh, wait, this guy is a former NFL player who played under one of the greatest coaches of all time and also comes from that coach's coaching tree through vis-a-vis -vis Sean Payton. And maybe he doesn't have the coordinator background, but okay, let's see what he can do in Detroit. However, I said this before, the, Lion, the, the Lions' local media, Detroit's local media is not used to seeing a rebuild. And this, could, this town can get pretty nasty sometimes when things go south, even with a team like a loser's like the Lions sometimes. And 
it's going to get pointed. It's going to get frustrated. You can all have a positive attitude and all buy in. But once the losses start to pile up, that's when the locker room starts to get a little testy. And it's up to coaches who are player managers in the NFL to keep everyone together. And I want to see how that's going to pan out. All I, all I will say to this is I know it will be an upgrade over Matt Patricia, but I want to see a meaningful upgrade over Matt Patricia. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And it's, uh, you're, you're right. I, I think that's a, a good point to bring up. And we've talked about it a little bit already, but just like that, when, when the turbulence hits, how, how will this team respond? How will the coaches respond? Because it seems like everyone is taking their cues from the coaching sp- staff right now and and yeah like I, th- I think the Lions the media Detroit they're all in the honeymoon phase right now with Dan Campbell and rightfully so like he's done everything right he I mean aside from aside from Don Mulebeck but um he's done mostly everything right well I mean it was not a great start for him because like yeah the kneecaps thing sets the your coaches CEO people as- asunder and then there was, you know, quite a few questions from the regular people about why this guy get hired and not. But the, none Eric of that, none of that was happening locally. Like the players bought right. in, that was all, that Detroit was bought side, in, sure. and who, like, who cares about them? No one cares about them. They're not going to impact. Does, it doesn't matter. Still, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't though. Like, it, ticket sales it are from local people. People buying in Detroit, you just get to have to get the local people to buy in, and and that's all that should matter to them. But yeah, like this team, the team's, team's going to lose some games. Like I, I know that's not probably what a lot of people that are listening in want to hear, but this team's going to lose some games. So then what happens? Is, is Dan Campbell still like the cheery, like golly gosh guy that, that, that we, that we like seeing every day in, in front of the, the press? Does he get a little angry? Does he get frustrated? Does he, does he lose some of his energy? And, and I don't, I suspect the answer to that is no for every single one of them. I think he's just going to be himself. But uh, it, it it definitely is something that intrigues me because uh, I think a lot of people are taking cues from him right now. As long as Dan Campbell doesn't, ooh, I don't know, do something like publicly suggest that his players should be executed, <laughs> I think that he'll do a pretty good job. <laughs> In that guy's defense, that was him bombing a joke from an old USC coach, I believe. However, also in also against that person, Brian Kelly is the only college coach with a body count. Uh, by the way, to close out this segment, Lions have announced their captains. They have indeed. And they did it in list cast format because they have five. Jared Goff, Frank Ragnow, Alex Anzalone, Trey Flowers, Jalen Reeves Maven. Can't say I'm really that surprised. I mean, Alex Anzalone might be a bit of a surprise. Like I thought, maybe Jeff Jeff Okuda. May, I thought Jeff Okuda had an outside chance, given how vocal and uh, how much of a leader he's really been in uh, in training camp. JRM is a great pick there. I think JRM's done a lot of work in kind of a leadership role there. I mean, he's 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 one of the oldest guys on the team. Yeah, well. <laughs> at like 26 or 27. <laughs> And one of the longest tenured Lions at this point, too. I, I think he point. is the longest. Is he not? I think, yeah. I think he might be. Is he, the, <laughs> is he the only player? No, Taylor Decker, 2016. Ah. Yeah. Good call. Who is not a captain. Frank Ragnow gets the captaincy over him there. But Anyway, oh, yeah. let's, Frank let's take a quick Frank season. We're taking a quick break here. And when we come back, let's talk 49ers. Let's talk about those guys with dysentery from the Bay Area and their quinoa and their avocado toast, which is delicious. We'll be right back on the Pride of Detroit POD cast. Uh, if I don't get a response oh. from anyone on staff, I might have to write a quick article on those captains. That's fine. We can kind of sit here and uh, talk about it <clears throat> while you're doing that. <clears throat> you guys ready to do like a... A lightning round superlatives. Mm, yeah, I'm down. I'm down to do that. Um. All right. Well, then you're gonna have to look at chat, not me. Chat, are you ready to throw some superlative yeah, throw categories some superlatives in there? At us. I'll I'll check on chat while we're going on. Um, Tyson the Collector. Yes, I am a real pro wrestler, and I do work in Fox Sports. So, um, let's see here. Who wrote this first time? Chat from a viewer. 
second worst offense in the NFL aside from Houston. I don't know about that. I think the Eagles offense is going to be really bad this year. I think everyone, when you're talking about worst team in the NFL, you everyone's sleeping on how bad the Eagles are going to be. Yeah, I think there's a there's a good chance that the Giants can be really bad too. The Giants, I think they'll do better, but I'm, maybe I'm on copium because I did take Kenny Galladay in my fan and Evan Engram in my fantasy team. Most likely to get the next contract extension. Ooh, I like that one. Let's see who's up. Who's up for hmm. an extension? Chew on this for a while. Hawk, maybe. I think Hawk could get one next off season. It's gotta be Hawk. It's yep. Hawk. It's Hawkinson. Probably Hawkinson. I was trying to think because we just extended Oquara. Um, but, but. I think it depends on how Tracy Walker plays this year. Ooh. Does that count as an extension when you're just re-signing? That doesn't really count as an extension. You could re-sign him in the middle of the season, though. You could. Extend, that would be an extension. I, I, wa- I wonder. I wonder if that would happen. Maybe. I wonder if. I wonder if. I wonder if Tracy Walker can do enough in this season for a contract extension to happen. I feel like he's a guy who you get to the end of the season and you take stock of <clears> what you have and sign him to a contract uh, i think he would take it i think he's very happy with where he's at right now i think he he enjoys sure. the line secondary currently i think he likes the coaches here of course again as, as we we've said several times like we're we're in the happy part of the offseason so yeah that might change this is, a, this is a rough one player most likely to, to be suspended for a play on the field <laughs> what what if like real quick though what if cyber is just like lights out like in the first like six or seven games do you think that they would lock him into a contract extension? Yes. No. I think I think with a kicker, you have to show consistency through a full season before you go extending a kicker. Yeah, that's why I put 20 bucks on Justin Tucker to not miss a field goal this season. Anyway, so Chris, what was yours? Um, I, I hate doing this one, but the next one up that I saw was um, player most likely get, to get suspended for a play on the field from Harry V. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Collins. Really? He already did it because he already oh. had butted a ref last year. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's that's true. Hmm. I was looking towards some rookies just because I feel like some of these guys are coming with a mean streak. And uh... so then Levi. Le- Levi. Yeah, a pretty good I was. Answer. I was kind of leading Levi. I was leaning Levi, or or maybe Melifonwu. There. I mean, just because he got into a fight with Amon Ra. <laughs> well, it's. I mean, it, it's also too like I don't know. Maybe it's because I just heard Tom Brady talking about this about like this because he he kind of took the weird stance of like yeah, defensive players are getting screwed, but he's also saying a lot of it's on quarterbacks throwing it over the middle right. to guys who are you know are Murder going balls. to just get crushed. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's I think a uh, a slightly better question: Who's going to get the first Lions taunting penalty of the season? <laughs> Right, that 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 was. I was going to bring that into conversation because if you get two taunting penalties, you get kicked out of the game. I don't, that's, that's not true. really that doesn't count as a suspension, but we can yeah. we can go with it though. Um, man, it's got to be someone in the line secondary. Those guys, it's a are, defensive player. Those guys it's, are like kind of exactly out of control right now. Yeah, it's going to be a defensive player. <laughs> Alien Vifters on my side. Yeah, DB. It might be Okuda. I. I don't, but I'm like, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Tracy Walker. Just, okay. just to be wild card. Jared? I think, I think, no, I, not Jared. Uh, Uncle Ingebigo said Jared Goff seems like a taunter and I couldn't disagree that's, more. Uh, that's, 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 I don't know. That's troll speak. Um, <laughs> I'm on Ross St. Brown is a sneaky, oh, like, of course, sneaky. Oh, man. He's, a, he's a sneaky favorite. Like we were thinking about the defense completely, but mm. That seems like almost a, a, I just a don't shoe think, in, man. I, I just don't feel like the offense is going to get many places where they can really be in a position to taunt, though. I could see, like, Amon Ra just, like, doing a first down symbol and, like, dropping the ball right in front of a defender. Or, or like, spinning the ball, like, right next to a defender that's on the ground and him doing I think, the... I think yeah. he's more likely to, like, once he... Like, he's going to, like, push and shove with a corner... And he's going to like go up for the contested ball, come down with it, and then immediately get 
both of them are going to immediately jump up and he's going to immediately get in that corner's face. Yeah. That that's that seems more like Amon Ra to me. Yeah. Oh, this is really a superlative, but Tyra Williams over or under 1000 yards receiving. 17 game season. God, I under. I am really curious what stats are going to do to 17. I'm going to say under. Because I also think, too, like, the 17, I don't think 17 is, like, a statistical, like, just straight addition. Because I feel like by the time a lot of these guys get to the 17th game, everyone's going to be fucking tired. (laughs) I'm going to say over. Ooh, okay. (laughs) I'm going to say that Tyrell Williams is the leading receiver for the Detroit Lions. Ooh, okay. 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 He, He might not lead in receptions, though. But receiving yards, he will finish in first. Zach Handel, first current Lions coach to get a head coach job somewhere else. See, I, I was going to take that one too because I love I love the assumption in that one that a a current Lions coach is all is going to get a head coaching job, and the fact that he put first in there means that he believes there will be more than one that will eventually get a head coaching job. And I'm not saying it won't happen. There are definitely yeah. a couple candidates, head coaching candidates that we've already pointed out. Like they're they're literally. Uh, grooming do Staley to do that. We've all raved about Aaron Glenn and Aubrey Pleasant as guys who seem like up and comers. Antoine Randall L is kind of a fun one that we don't really talk about too much either. He's a young guy who former player, but I, 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 I think the more, the more realistic question is who has the best chance to be a future head coach. Best chance. I think do Staley. Yeah. I have to look at a coordinator because that's how I feel like the NFL is gone for how it selects its coaches now. So I want to. I mean, besides Dan Campbell, besides Dan Campbell, <laughs> but that's that was the big knock on him from a lot of right. people was true. What are the Lions doing? Not hiring. It'll be the you know, it'll be the knock on Deuce Daly too. Yeah, that's that's why I'm kind of leaning away from Deuce. So, um, so I guess yeah. I would go with Glenn. Coordinators that- coordinators have worked really well though. Matt Nagy. But I feel like I feel like Matt Patricia. I feel like just because he has a tent ties with the media and he's gonna get hyped up and some dummy is going to just go from that. Can I give a dark horse suggestion to Mark Brunel getting an OC job, knocking it out of the park somewhere, and then immediately far too quickly going up to head coach? Jared Goff would have to be really <laughs> really that's really good that's true that that's and true. that's why I, ha- I have to pick a defensive coach is because i think the defense might outperform people's expectations i don't think that's going to be the case with the offense i was more thinking aaron Brunel glenn with the next with the next quarterback after golf but yeah aaron glenn got a head coaching interview last off season yeah that's true yeah i i mean my answer is still glenn i it's mean just, yeah it's, i'm just it's saying good. keep an eye on brunel too i don't know if glenn is going to be done after one season though I don't, no, I don't know if he's, he's going to be, be here done. a couple of years. And I think I think he's going to get passed over at least a couple times before someone t- comes and takes a bite at the apple for Glenn. Yeah. And, and and none of us are mentioning Anthony Lynn. He already got a shot. He, look, I mean, yeah. He's he not going to get one that, right that's, away. That's the sad yeah. thing is like he, he got a shot. And I'll bring race into it. He got a shot and he's a black head coach. And black head coaches don't always get those second shots so easily. Plus, like, I mean, like, like I said, like, he's going to he's going to look like the bad guy at the end of the year. He just is. Yeah. Because the offense is going to stink. Yeah. 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 He's got he's got a lot of bad groceries to try to make to my, try to make a Michelin star recipe. with. First Lions player released. Ooh. The, this is tricky because it probably is. It's going to come in like the, the first week. They're going to do some roster tinkering. It's going to be a defensive back, right? No, I think it's going to be a wide receiver. I'm going to say, like, they're carrying seven fucking wide receivers. Like, I think it's going to be Tom Oh, yeah, then Tom Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy. Does Tom Kennedy even count? Because we're all saying he's going to get cut cut once the Kadero Hodge trade. No, that's already been processed. I mean, that's that's already processed. No, yeah, he's already on the roster. I mean, I I think it could possibly be one of those two guys. It could be Kadero Hodge or, or 
what's the other guy's name? Tom Kennedy? No, no, no. The guy, Trinity the, Benson. Trinity Benson. Um, because like I mean, there's no guarantee those guys work out. Like they're they're taking flyers on them. You know, one one an expensive flyer with a fifth and seventh round pick and getting yeah one a sixth back in return. But you know, I I think they're just like, hey, we need we need we need to take some flyers here. We need to see if we can improve the room. Kennedy has already kind of proved his way. They they know what they have in Kennedy. I guess is the best way to say it. So if uh, if they learn that maybe these two guys, these two new guys, aren't aren't what they hype to be, they could be gone in a week. I, it wouldn't completely shock me. People would get upset about it, but whatever. Can't wait until these horrible takes of the offense get proven wrong. Yeah, I mean, if it gets proven wrong, it's proven wrong. Like I'm thrilled if try I'm to wrong. Tell me, try to tell me. Yeah, I'm thrilled if we're wrong, but try to tell me on paper that this is a a good offense. <laughs> like. Unless you believe that uh, that Jared Goff was just winning those games in Los Angeles because of him and not Sean McVay, but he was doing it with grit and determination and all those other fun things people like to talk about when they talk about QB wins. Like, I'm looking at this offense, and I'm like, what are you going to impress me with on paper right now? The, the Like I said, the only hope, is I think, is a run game. And and to be fair, like I, I think I've been consistent in the past month or two is like, I don't, I don't like what I'm seeing about the offense, but I can't judge the running game in camp because there's no live tackling. I can't judge the running game in the preseason because DeAndre Swift isn't there and Jamal Williams was barely there and half of the offensive line didn't play for most of the preseason. So there, there is that if, if you're clinging to offensive hope for the Detroit Lions, it has to be in the run game because you're, I'm, I'm sorry, you're just you're not going to see a, a threatening Saying aerial attack. something you haven't seen is horrible is a horrible take. All right, so we're just going to assume it's all rainbows and puppies because we haven't seen the I, whole thing. I mean, what did I throw all of my us, training camp observations out? I've, I've been watching yeah, training you, camp for a while. You want us month. to fucking lie to you guys or what? <laughs> you want us to treat you like an idiot? Because I'll treat you like an idiot. Lions are going seventeen and zero, man. Playoffs all day, rainbows. <laughs> you're you're going to get a fucking pony and a Ferrari. Like, Ooh. I will, love a Ferrari. Will the pony fit in the Ferrari? Nope, I didn't see it. But you don't. You want the other extreme. Stop! Cut out the fucking bullshit, man. You want the other extreme. You want the other extreme. You don't want to hear that. Hey, this it doesn't look great right now. You want to close your ears and go la 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 la. Don't be an idiot. I mean, what you're you're basically asking us to do is say nothing. Like we're not allowed to have yeah, any sort we're of. We're not allowed opinion. to give our fucking Which, opinions. I mean, like, come fine. on, man. It's it's fine. It's whatever. Like, based on what I've seen in camp, things don't look great for the offense. I hope I'm wrong. I'm I'm I, I'm open to potentially be wrong. We we get proven wrong about a lot of stuff in the you preseason. Wrong a lot, but at the like, same time, like stop. there was also a lot of warning signs in the past couple of years under Patricia, where it's just like this team looks like garbage in the preseason. This this defense can't yeah, stop we got a thing. Killed nonstop for saying that this team did not look good under Patricia. We got people telling us nonstop, "You guys are wrong. This this defense is about to turn a corner. This team's about to turn a corner." That turn never came. We slammed right into that brick wall. I wonder why Anthony... Oops. Oh, frick! Wow, I'm just hitting the wrong buttons like crazy today, Chad. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to fix it. All right, we're good. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Ryan. Oh, I am deafened. Hold on. There we go. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, Ryan, An you said something about Anthony Lynn that I so rudely cut off because I clicked about six different wrong buttons <laughs> before I got That's to where okay. I wanted to be. That's okay. So what I was saying was that I am still kind of perplexed as to why Anthony Lynn decided to not take a year off and decided to make this Detroit Lions offense his reclamation project. Maybe he, maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe we're all wrong about the offense. Maybe it's because we haven't seen anything yet. Maybe. I, I, I here's, here's the positive. He has seen you know things. I, so. I feel That's like, the thing. I feel like, can, can I just, I, I think the theory is that Lynn got won back by the fact that he's working with former NFL players as his coaches, as coaches around him. I think that, I think that matters a lot, especially for guys who are former players. Sure. I, to work with guys who are actually who have played under the shield and aren't just some like 
upsized quality quality management assistant who played like D two as a speed. I I think I think part of it for sure, may, and maybe even the majority of it is that culture. It's it's the culture that the Lions are building through these previous players that that know how the game is played and are bringing positive reinforcement and bringing so much energy to every single practice where they're they're sometimes the lo- the, the loudest people on the field and in a positive way just like i mean the thing that always sticks out to me is during training camp there was a point in practice it was early on in practice in which the defense made a play and aubrey pleasant was screaming at everyone on defense and saying <laughs> I, I can't say exactly what he was saying, but he was basically incur- like, why aren't you guys praising the hell out of this guy? He just made a play. You guys need to hype this man up. You guys need to be screaming and, and cheering and, and, and hyping everything up. And it's just like, yeah, I want to hear. Again, uh, that's that's I, what I want. Yeah. That's energy. That's energy from coaches. You aren't getting from guys who started as quality manager, a manager. Right. Assistants. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You're yeah. getting it from former players. That's I think you know we're coming at it from from the same from the same for, to the same point, just from different. Sorry, my throat's raw now. Um, from the same, uh, just from different angles. Yeah. What were we talking about before, Anthony Lynn? Oh, Anthony right. Lynn. We were yeah. talking about the, Anthony yes. Lynn. I, I wanted to go back to that really quick because <clears> the <throat> one thing that I've seen in camp that we haven't seen much in games is the pre-snap motion stuff. And I think that's that's might be something to get a little bit excited about. I think the lines might mess around a lot with where their players are at. You know, you might see some wide receivers in the backfield, some running backs out wide. You might see finally, finally, we I, I saw I saw hints of it in training camp, y'all. Two running back sets. They might be coming. They might Dude, finally I mean, be coming. We, we saw the play that got wiped out in the first game where Amon Ra was, was lined yeah, up in the backfield. split right. backfield. So I mean I, I think they're going to try to be as creative as possible and do, and, and this is what they've said they've done from the past. It was just, which is just use the talent that they've got and try to put that talent in positions to succeed. It might, you know, considering they only have what I would consider three or four, maybe three weapons in, in Deandre Swift and I'm honoring St. Brown and TJ Hawkinson. Like those are your three primary weapons, I think, but they're going to try to find they're, they're going to try find ways to get those guys open and in space. You got to be creative. Yeah. You you, you have to be and they, uh, and they will try. They will work their ass off to do it. My question is just if if the talent pool in terms of your offensive weapons is that thin, how how are you going to get those guys open? Because the other team knows it. And and yeah. that maybe maybe that's where someone steps up. Maybe that's where Khalif Raymond steps up. Maybe Tyrell Williams does get to the 1000 yards. Um but I'm skeptical. That's all. There's, it's room to grow. It's just, it's just not going to be it this year. I just something there. There's too many questions to different groups for me to think that all of it, and it all needs to work right, right away. Like all those different questions have to be as one dismissed. Jared Goff has to be average to above average. DeAndre Swift needs to be healthy and able to continue to improve on what he is. And one of one or two of these wide receivers have to work out. Yep. And and Panay Sewell has to grow up pretty quick. Yep. <laughs> and just he think about what I said st- too. Like I said, <laughs> yeah. this team has three weapons, and I included a fourth round rookie in yeah, one of those weapons that we're all very high on. But I mean, we've all been high on rookies before sometimes, yeah. and it just doesn't. Yeah. Uh, really quick, uh, Captain James Kirk with the 10 bits says, keeping it real, guys. I don't want a POD that shits out rainbows and tells BS. Nothing about this offense looks good. Looks like it will be good. Obviously, we could be wrong, but we have not seen anything so far that yeah, gives well, the mask. The mask makes me different. That the offense will be good. <clears throat> not on the day where I'm wearing the mask, man. <laughs> and not where I'm losing my voice, apparently. Wow. So I know we were talking about next line to most likely get a contract extension. Mark Andrews with the Ravens just signed a really? big old deal. Four oh, year yeah. deal worth 56, 56 million, 14 million average per year. He'll make more money through four years than any other tight end in the league. Dang. That's good stuff. Hockey going to get paid next off season. We'll see. We'll see. There's some really interesting stuff in the NFL this year. Like, 
I think personally, I just had to fill out my predictions for this year. And I think I filled out like Bill's Rams for the Super Bowl. I don't want to bet against Mahomes, but it's hard to go to three Super Bowls. And that is a lot. I don't know. I had to be on the radio with some guy who was former Detroit radio who still wanted to take a dump on Matt Stafford. I didn't think it was that big of a story in this time of year to really be bringing up Matt Stafford's playoff game from against the Cowboys. But it feels like ancient history, man. It does. And it feels it like his ancient history. It was, it was seven years ago. Yeah. It's, I just, um, I don't know. I I'm kind of glad Stafford isn't getting like a massive amount of, sh- of spotlight on him in LA right now, just because LA isn't a giant NFL market just because like it's not sports he doesn't market. need those shit takes. He doesn't need those shit takes. He's in a good spot and it's a tough division. Do we, I don't know if you, if you guys are planning on doing a gambling podcast, but maybe, maybe this is good between segment fodder. Do we want to talk about Super Bowl picks? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Cause I think me and Ryan on our next gambling podcast, we're going to be mostly looking at week one. Okay. Yeah, I I already have I have two bets in. Yeah, I noticed which you, one you do kept you believe a lot in? of free plays. You get you hold up. We need to talk about Ryan's free plays with all of his crazy props. He's just throwing left and right. Yeah, I, give me free bets and I'm going to use all of them. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I have I have a fifty dollar free bet on the 49ers. Um, I I think they could be sneaky contenders. Like if Trey if Trey Lance really pops off, that defense just needs to be healthy. Because uh, I mean, legitimately, you're going to see such an improvement from that defense if they can just stay healthy. And I don't think that I mean it wasn't a huge concern. We're talking about a team that went to the playoffs or went to the Super Bowl just a year ago, like in in the season prior with Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback, nonetheless. So I don't know. I I like the 49ers as a sneaky team, um, and. I'm really, really scared of Aaron Rodgers on a war path. Yeah. Yep. I'm really, I'm really scared. The NFC is going to be just, that's going to be a brutal playoff for the NFC. I, I don't, uh, one team that I am for sure, for sure out on is, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Really? Really? Even though they brought back everyone. Yep. And I'm they're very, all vaccinated. I'm very out on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers getting back to the Super Bowl. Did everybody forget that Tom Brady threw three picks in the conference championship game and got bailed out by Matt LaFleur making bad choices and Kevin King getting absolutely toasted by Adam Humphreys? Like, I don't know. Like, I, 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 I don't think they get as lucky. And then, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't think, I don't think it's going to happen. I think that they have a good shot in the NFC South to win that division, but I would not be shocked if they got upset in, in their first playoff they, game. They don't only have a good shot in the NFC South. They've basically already won it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like who's like You don't Falcons? believe in Sam Darnold? You don't, don't believe in Sam no, Darnold? I don't believe no, in Sam no, Darnold. I don't not. believe in I don't believe in him. In I don't believe in Jameis Winston. James I, don't Winston. I certainly don't believe in Jameis Winston. If the but if there's any coach that could coach his way out of a paper bag, it would be Sean Payton, right? Like with I that suppose. run game. Yeah. And if it's gonna be if it's gonna be Camara, if just, it's gonna be Taysom Hill, if it's whatever. Like I, I don't know. I Listen, I I hope you're right about the Bucks. I, there's nothing about the Bucks that I like or enjoy. I don't I don't like Tom Brady. I don't like Florida. Hey man, more more rings for Indama and Sue. That's right. that's my. That's is that my where he is silver. still? I don't remember. Yes, it, but and and it's weird because bringing back everybody from a Super Bowl team can go one of two ways. It can be like, well, you you stood pat. That's not good. We saw the Lions do that what in 2014 or no after I think the 2011 season they stood pat and then they. They, they fell flat on their face or it could be that like, was a, weird but it, it was also like a, it was a good team. Like it was a team that I was skeptical about last year. And then they made me look like an idiot. Um, they, they went through some early season struggles and I think that's something to, to point out, but I'm also a big Bruce Arians fan believer. I think he's a really good um, head coach and I, I have the bucks going back to the Super Bowl but losing to the Buffalo bills. 
They finally do. Stringer out. Do we have Ryan's betting corner segment. I need some of this free money heaps winning. Well, look for one leg at a time on the POD cast feed on your favorite podcast platforms coming this week. <laughs> um, as I said, I have I have bills over Rams. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the NFC this year. It scares the hell out of me looking at all these teams. Um, I just have to put my trust in last year's best defense and hope it continues to impress. And I, you expect that hopefully Cam Akers being out for the season is the real like problem I have. But I think there's no reason that he's a running back. He's replaceable. <laughs> but the Rams offense has always needed a good running back. Like it's just how it's, it's, it's worked. It's just, but still, I feel like they can get some breaks to get there. And then the bills, like, I think the bills, first off, I think for the chiefs, it's hard for me to say they're going to go to three straight super bowls. That's not, yeah, not but something why? we've seen in, because but it's why? not something we've seen in forever, Ryan. Well, we've never seen Patrick Mahomes. Okay. But there was a lot of Tom Brady teams that didn't go three super bowls straight. Don't try to tell me that Tom Brady's even in the same class as Patrick Mahomes as a physically he, he gifted back in the day. He was like, Tom Brady was not throwing the passes that Patrick Mahomes is throwing. Come on. <laughs> Come on. This is, Come on, this is where I pull up a, a picture of Tom Brady in sweatpants at the combine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For crying out loud. Don't tell me. Come on. I think that Jared Allen, he's not Mahomes, but he's got really good leaping Josh weapons. Josh Allen? What I say, Mahomes? You did, no, you said Josh Allen. He said Jared Allen. Oh, oh, Josh Allen. Excuse me, Josh Allen. And I think the big thing for the Bills is just their defense is just going to make is set up to just make plays. Here, here's a big that difference will, that will probably like. I think that in a weird AFC playoff, like I just I I think I can trust the Bills there. And then I think again that that playmaking ability for the defense is what puts them over the Rams in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't I just don't know if I I don't know if I totally buy the Bills. I don't know. There's something okay, about fair. the Bills that I don't buy in. Um <laughs> I, I think it's maybe their I don't know. I because I, you, you look at all of the past Super Bowl teams that have won and there's been this kind of trend of them not really having a running game. So I guess it probably isn't something that should dissuade me so much from the Buffalo Bills. But I think it's something that people are overlooking about the Chiefs because Clyde Edwards Hilaire got hurt last year. And they had to rely on right. like a a mixed bag of Le'Veon Bell and And they did well, fix the offensive line. So like yeah. Yeah, I mean I don't know, offensive line health. I mean Travis Kelsey's really good. Travis Kelsey reminds me of Paul Pierce. Like, I don't know how Paul Pierce was able to score so much as he did in basketball because he didn't have any athleticism whatsoever. Like, Travis Kelsey reminds me of the same. When he runs routes, I'm like, how how are people biting on his fake moves? Like, he is, he is that technical of a route runner. Like, it's insane. Travis Kelsey's good. Hashtag analysis. <laughs> the Bills are tricky for me. I, I have them as my Super Bowl winner. But I understand some skepticism. Wait, do am I am I sharing what so you've got we've both got Bills and you've got Bucks and I've got Rams. Is yes. that how it goes? Yep. Wow. But I don't feel comfortable. Now. I mean I, I think I'm joking. Josh Allen Josh Allen is, is at the 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 forefront of all this, right? Because he had one pretty bad season where everyone's like, Oh, that was a bad draft pick and then he comes out last year balls the frick out and now everyone is like oh top 10 quarterback top five quarterback like this guy is amazing he's fantastic but i do think there needs to be a little bit of pulling on the reins back because like now there now there's a season of, of watching him be really good and in order to be amongst the top five quarterbacks in the league you have to do it more than once sure it, it, i would say to that I, I would say to that that his trump card in that in that argument though is that he does have stefan diggs he does and and that's that's not going away, but I mean you can't rely on entire offense on one wide receiver. That's not it's not how it works. No, I know, but like he's got other receivers. It's just you got to plan for digs, and if you're planning sure. for digs, then you've got other guys who are just gonna kind of get more open. You guys aren't high on Cole Beasley? 
We're not, no, we're not, we're not going to get into that. Hey, top um, 100 NFL player, but go ahead. No, no. I like this question. I like this question, and I know we're running long on this, and we need um, quirk, quirky, zerky. Who is going to make the playoffs that didn't last year? I think the Patriots are coming back, y'all. Well, Ryan, Ryan's answer is the Rams. That's like the easy one, right? The Rams were in the were the Rams in the playoffs last year? Oh yeah, they, they were. were in sorry. I'm sorry. They were, yeah, yeah, they, they lost. Were. They yeah. Were. Seattle. Um but maybe the 49. Wait, did you say the 49ers are in your uh, Super Bowl? 49ers, yeah. 49ers are a good answer. Um What else would I? I'm probably just pick whatever pick one of the three teams in the NFC East that didn't make the playoffs, they'll probably make the playoffs because the NFC sucks and is unpredictable. Uh, I mean, that, that probably means Cowboys in the playoffs. I don't want to see that. No, no nobody Giants, wants to see the that. Giants. No! Okay. <laughs> no, no you telling me that the Giants suck! <laughs> the... Here's my AFC team. The don't Jacksonville Jaguars. Shut no, up. Get no, out of here. No. Nope. Urban Meyer's not going to nope. last a year. Nope. I bet Colts. Colts are winning that division by a mile. Oh, God. That's yeah, but even no, no, no. That wasn't. That no. wasn't. That wasn't the question. Oh, they're, they're going to win a wild wait, card. The, Col- the Colts are going to win it by a mile. They're no, going to no, beat the I, Tennessee no, Titans. I, 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 no, yeah, I that's why I thought. That back on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm saying Titans if it's a team that didn't make the playoffs last year, which the Colts and the Titans both did, it's, it's going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. No. Nope, nope, nope. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna pull this off. I know I was kind of saying Patriots, but I'm being I'm being meany. Um I think the Raiders. I think the Raiders could make you know, I can't even I can't Raiders just cut their third round pick from, last from a year, year ago. <laughs> no, my I, I can't even say Raiders. From the AFC it's gonna be New England. It could be. I think New England be. what? Yeah, I, I think be. I think the, the Death Star is back. I don't think the Dolphins are as good as people think they are. And I think Patriots could easily become the second best team in that division and get a wild card. Um, I, will, I will never root for Mac Jones. I work for Mac Jones. I will never simp for Mac Jones. <laughs> I think I, I wrote this down as one of my other predictions on Evan Star. I think <laughs> Mac Jones could be a rookie, could be rookie of the year. I don't think he's going to be the best rookie, but he's going to get the narrative on his side because, like, the, the New England offense has retooled itself and gotten, like, good pieces back, and now Mac Jones is going to get that credit if, like, they look Plus, better than they Half did. the roster hasn't opted out from COVID. It, yeah, yeah. That's I, part of that, too. Yes. My, I have to, my serious answer from the is, NFC is the Cowboys. Team, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. God. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. Look, I did some predictions on another Twitch stream, and I'm looking back at them, and the only answer I had was the Cowboys. Sorry. I a team that's the Lions. Woo! The Cardinals. Cardinals didn't make the playoffs last year. Why hasn't that... Jeremy said the Vikings yet? Because I, I could. They're all going to get COVID. I I assume they just made the playoffs last year. Did they not? No. They did not. <laughs> There was. A... <laughs> I know they did. There were two teams from the NFC North that made there the was. playoffs. Somehow so. the Bears made it. At what eight and eight or nine and seven or whatever it was. MVP baby. <laughs> MVP. See, that's why I believe in the Bills more is because Brian Dable managed to look managed to make Mitchell Trubisky look like an MVP, not an MVP. In the granted, it was preseason and it was against the Bears defense. I think is going to suck this year, but. Hot also take, hot take right here. Trubisky Clip it. Clip it. Hold on. Like Lions defense better than the Bears defense this year. Clip it. Clip it. Okay. Boom. I'm ready to get back to it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Unless you guys have anything else, I'm kind of like just beat though no i'm ready for third segment yeah, i've just realized we're over two hours this might be our longest stream in a while sounds on par for us <laughs> we're excited it's yeah pre- we are it's the end of the preseason next time, we football guys, we, uh, next time we see you guys is going to be on a sunday after the games 
besides first bite, obviously, but you know, for POD cast, I mean. So Pride of Detroit POD cast. That's the name. Don't don't use it out too much. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Let's look ahead to the 49ers game to finish our season preview episode here. We do have first bite coming for you later this week. So look for that as we as we will discuss the 49ers side of it and those matchups. But let's look exclusively at the Lions and what we expect out of the Lions and maybe what we're looking for from the Lions in the first game week one is volatile week one is weird and we are ready for that weirdness when you are just playing with house money like like the detroit lions where even if you lose you kind of win baby because you improve the draft stock we are not talking about draft stock in week one i am not doing it <laughs> you just did in the scraps nope can't prove it yes i can <laughs> oh, wait, just watch yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've got a way to prove it now. Um, look, okay, so I, I I won't talk too much about the 49ers, but this is a good first test defense for someone like Jared Goff, I feel like. Mm -hmm. to, to know right out of the gate what who Jared Goff is. I think it's kind of, I think it's going to be a tough game to, to assess Jared Goff, because this might be one of the toughest defenses he's going to face all season long. Yeah, rip I mean, the band-aid off. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just going to be really tough because they have a they have the perfect TJ Hawkinson shutdown player on their team in Fred Warner. I mean, he's he's the he is the kryptonite to any tight end in this league. He's he's the exact guy you want on that tight end, and you don't even have to worry about double teaming Hawkinson or putting eight players in the box and, and doing whatever, you know, other teams are supposedly going to be doing against the lions. So it, it's going to come back a, a lot to like what Jeremy said, like it's going to be on Anthony Lynn to be creative in you know, pre-snap motion and things like this and, and mixing things up in the backfield and whatnot. But Jared Goff is going to have a rude awakening in week one. Cause that 49ers defense, like I said, it's probably going to be a top five defense in the NFL. Right. And it, it's, it's just a, it's kind of a poor matchup too. Right. Because if there's one question about the defense I have, it's that they're secondary. There's a bunch of kind of overturn there and, and not a lot of proven talent there. there. There's some, there's some guys that, that have shown flashes, but the Lions could really use a good wide receiving core in this game. And they don't have it. And then, I mean, I think the, the, the biggest thing that I'm, I'm looking for from the Lions here is that offensive line, right? Because mm -hmm. Bosa, Armstead, it's going to be a huge test for, for Decker to, to get, you know, back to his top 10 left tackle self again. Um, and then obviously Panay Sewell this is going to be a, a, a really, really tough test for him. And uh, we, we got to see how it holds up. And, and you know, they, they, Javon Kinlaw is in, in the interior there. So they've got a lot of guys there that, that are going to test, you know, the, what we deem the strength of this team. And we're going to find out really soon if this is just, you know, a, a relative strength of the team because everything else is so bad, or if this is a legitimate group of players that, that can boast, you know, a top 10 unit potentially. We've been talking all offseason about how the Lions offensive line is getting disrespected. You know, it's not in these top 10 lists. It's not in these top five lists. Um, this is, I mean, if, if you can show up against the 49ers in week one, that, that goes a long way in proving some of these guys wrong. Yeah, and there's usually – week one is always volatile enough that you can probably – come out of the gate with you know no and kind of surprise people a little bit and see what you can really do um i on the defensive side we keep saying we want to see the more from the defensive backs and i don't know if jimmy garoppolo is really going to be the one who really tests you there what ryan's got his finger up though I think this goes back to what Jeremy said in the segment earlier where we talked about the coaching staff being on display yeah. I think that this is going to be an opportunity for the coaching staff to show how prepared they are because they mentioned that they're preparing for two quarterbacks, yep. both Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo. And then the second thing is, is how they're going to be able to adjust, how they're going to be able to adjust on the fly when it comes to this delineation between Garoppolo under center, Lance under center. They have some really speedy running backs. 
I, I think that this is going to be a very interesting first take of the Lions defense as a whole, because like Jeremy said, there's so much depth along the defensive line and that's great, but we need to see it. And, and not only do we need to see it, we need to see it implemented in the right way. And that's where it comes that where that's where it comes back on the coaching staff. So they're going to be really under a microscope for me in, in, in week one against the 49ers. No, no question. And we talked about it a little bit with Dan Campbell today about how tricky this, this offense is the Kyle Shanahan offense, where there's a ton of pre-snap motion. There's a ton of misdirection. There's a ton of this way and that way. And he called it eye candy where it's trying to get your players to be undisciplined. You, they see one thing happening. They react to that. They, they lose their discipline of what they're supposed to be doing on the play. And, and they're and the Niners are going in the other direction. What scares me here is that the Lions roster is full of a ton of young players, a ton of guys who won't have seen these sort of things before. Who, If, if you're going to have a group of guys that might be susceptible to all this misdirection, it's going to be first and second and third year players. And that's all the Lions defense is. That's 90% of their the defensive one, roster. What was the one play from the preseason where we all saw the defense kind of get embarrassed a little bit? That was the Ben Roethlisberger pump fakes. Right. Like that kind of, so that goes to your point. Like that's well, young guys got to learn about that. Yeah, stuff. And, and, and that, been, that and those early plays against Buffalo, like those yeah. screens, the misdirections on the bootlegs and stuff where, yep. where players are leaking out like, Hey, the 49ers have Kyle use check. Like yeah. that's just what he does. George Kittle. That's just what they're going to do. Right. Like, yeah. And you know, I, I asked Romeo Quar this today too, because like, the the whole offense the whole off season this defense has been talking about we're going to be more aggressive we're going to we're going to make them have to account for us we're going to dictate the game rather than they are and so i said well how do you be aggressive when you also have to be super disciplined and he just said you got to trust the tape you got to do your research on the tape you got to trust in what you see you've got to make sure that you know if you know why this team is doing this why they're sending this guy in motion why they're doing that then you can trust yourself my question is how much film are these rookies and, and first and second year play? How much, how much are they going to have? How much are they going to retain? And, and that, that's what brings me, I think the most fear in this matchup is just, I think Kyle Shanahan going against a really, really young defense is, is a, is a huge tip of the scales in San Francisco's favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially, I think so. And like, like you say about lack of tape too, Jeremy, like what kind of tape do they have on Trey Lance? <laughs> Not much. Not fun. <laughs> He's going to come in on, on packages designed for Trey Lance if they do play him. Like, if Kyle Shanahan's taking the tape off of Trey Lance and putting him out there, it's going to be because he knows he's going to put him in a, in a position to, like, really make a play. And really quick, and, and we'll talk about this on first play a little bit too, they're, they're, I think we need to at least mention the fact that, that uh, Trey Lance is dealing with a chip in one of his fingers or something. He, he, I think he, it's dumb. I could, I could be wrong. He, he didn't have a brace at today's practice, but if I'm not mistaken, at least early in practice, he wasn't throwing a football. So there, there's a possibility yeah. they're just like, you know what? There's a rookie of our future. There's a quarterback of the future. Let's not play him in week one. Um, but at the same time, I think they're, I think, I think if he's, if they deem him healthy enough, they're going to at least put him out there situationally. Has he, has he tried eating it? It's just a crumb. <laughs> we're we're going to have him eating it. All right. Three an, keys to the game. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go eat the eat the W eat the L. All eat right, three L. keys to the game. What you got, Jeremy? Well, I mean, first is that is what I said at the top is they they need to protect Jared Goff. They we need to see Panay Sewell trial by fire, not have some of those mistakes he showed in the preseason. I I have faith in Taylor Decker. I I'm curious as if maybe the game plan is to put Darren Fells over on Panay Sewell's side, help him out a little bit there. I think that would be smart. That's why you have Darren Fells. Um, so you got to protect Jared Goff and, and you got to run the ball. You got to, you know, it, the, I think the offensive line is the biggest key in this game, uh, period, because I think that they're, they're, they're going to want to run the ball. They're going to want to keep the, the, the 49ers offense off the field. And, uh, they, they have to protect Jared Goff in, in the cases when he's dropping back to throw, because man, that, that is, I mean, Dan Campbell today, the very first thing he said, when what pops off of the tape for the 49ers, Bosa period, got to stop Bosa. Number one key of the game. Ryan, yeah. your key. Oh, man, my key. Jeremy took my key. Um, so he, here's my key. I, it, it comes back to what I was talking about, the defense. And I think it's it's how well the defense is prepared 
and how well they are able to adjust on the fly. Because I think once they get a taste of Trey Lance in the first half, then maybe there's an opportunity in the second half. As long as things don't get out of hand, that maybe we can see how this coaching staff is able to scheme things up so that they can contain Trey Lance. And you know what? I we, we saw it in glimpses, right? And I think one of the one of the brightest thing one of the brightest spots of the preseason was Derek Barnes. And Derek Barnes eventually making that play that players were continuous continuously falling, you know, victim to in that Buffalo game was like those dump off screens um that were that was away from the play side. And then you see the Lions recognize that, put Derek Barnes in a position to succeed, him to trust himself and trust the coaching and then go and make that play. Like that's what I'm going to be that that's gonna be a key to the Lions, I think, this entire season is having those young guys be able to make adjustments and make plays. And if they want to keep things close, it's gonna be it's gonna be on their defense. My key here is gonna be on the offense and it's called golf around and find out, which doesn't even make sense. I think Jared Goff, um, like look, Bosa's a problem. You're gonna to have to get it out pretty quick. You're not going to have to get challenged downfield too much, but you are going to have to have a pretty good vision of the field. And you're going to have to rely on some young guys to try to get open best you can. But I don't think the lions are getting much on the ground in this game. It's going to, the offense is going to live or die by what Jared Goff wants to do on where he puts that ball. And, you know, defense can work against, the 49ers all you can, but uh, if if Goff and that offense isn't doing anything out of the gate, then it's going to it's going to fall apart pretty quick. Not a visual medium, but we have also been podcasting for almost two and a half hours. <laughs> That's right. We're running out of steam. <laughs> we are. We, we've been spending a lot of time between segments. Look for extra size scraps. And I think, though, we are almost there unless anyone I, I see Jeremy was like, pondering my key very hard but i mean yeah I, I, it, this is jared goff's first opportunity to prove a lot of people wrong and last week someone asked him like you know do you do you pay attention to the outside stuff you know does that does that motivate you and you know he, he played around first he's like i don't listen to the outside stuff and then someone asked him it again some well, someone asked him again and he was like listen i know what people are saying i'm not stupid I know expectations are low for this team. I know expectations are low for me and doesn't motivate me. Yeah. Maybe a little bit, but um, you know, he, he, he just, he seemed to believe, you know, anything can happen and maybe, maybe it can, maybe I'm wrong about Jared Goff. Maybe a lot of people who counted off Jared Goff um, as soon as the lines traded for him, which wasn't me. Um, maybe they were right. But yeah, I mean, this, it's, if, it's... If, if, if he can change the narrative in one single game and, and he probably can't in one single game, but if, if he does it, if he shows up against the 49ers, like if he looks okay. If he just looks decent, if he doesn't look like a complete disaster, I think that's, that's enough to be like, okay, well it's a start. Right. I, I think that's where we get into defining what a disaster is. And the thing that I like about Jared Goff's response is obviously he's not dumb and he's, he's aware of the expectations with this team, but I don't need Jared Goff playing out of himself. Like I don't need him playing outside of himself. Jared Goff is at his best when he's playing within himself, when he's not trying to, you know, prove anything about him being a former number one overall pick or, you know, we we're all dying for Jared Goff to take shots down the field. And for, you know, these speedy wide receivers that the lions have to, to stretch the field vertically and open up things for the run game and make everything hunky dory. But we don't want that. We want Jared Goff to not turn the ball over. Right. We want Jared Goff. I mean, because I, Jeremy's going to hate this. He's going to absolutely hate it. But the Lions have Jack Fox. Oh, God. <laughs> well, they... Look, all I'll say on Jared Goff, all, all, all I'm going to say on Jared Goff, the one last point I have is this. The 49ers know Jared Goff very well, but that also holds on the reverse that Jared Goff knows the 49ers very well. They've been playing each other twice a year for quite, for uh, several years now. Like, this shouldn't be a complete unknown to Jared Goff on who this team is the issue I have with what Ryan said, and it's not just that you're relying on a punter as a weapon, which is a huge problem. Uh, not saying it's a formula for success by right. any means. Well, yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like 
Jared Goff, you're right. Jared Goff works best when when everything is is running smoothly and he's you know I hate I hate to use the term but more of a game manager type of guy. Like he's just he's he's not making mistakes. He's taking what the defenses get him. But the problem with that is it's not going to work this year. Like they they're going to like they're going to need him to play Stafford ball at some point where it's just like sorry Goff we're we're down 14 points in the fourth quarter. Go throw us a win. And it might it might happen in week 1. And I don't think a lot of people have faith that that's going to work. And and it's it's not all Jared Goff's fault because the Lions did not do a good job getting him a receiving core. They just didn't. They they took a couple swings. They didn't seem to hit on pretty much any of them. And so now we're left with with you know no waiver wire scraps and and you know seventh round draft pick swaps and and things like that. And so it, it's he's in a tough situation. And and like I've been saying on the entire podcast, really the only way out is a good running game. And I just don't know if we're there yet. And that's what they did, right? And I think it's really clear now to see that the Lions, instead of prioritizing the wide receiver room, is they prioritized trying to establish a running game. Yeah. I mean, they went out and got Jamal Williams. They drafted Panay Sewell in the first round. You know, they did things to try to set up this team for success when it when it comes to the ground game. And, I mean, that's why Josh Hill, it's, yeah, it's Josh silly, Hill but, like, and Josh Hill was a signing that was supposed to be, that, that was a big signing. Yeah. That... You know, they, they had to they had to call an audible and they had to go get Darren Fells, but it's clear that they prioritized a running game, and so that's what makes me think it, it's it's dissimilar, right? Because here's the thing, like we, we talk about the Matt Patricia years and they have a Ferrari in Matthew Stafford, but they want to try to play game possession. Right. And they want to run the ball and they want to beat teams with their with their defense and, and controlling the clock. Well now it's the opposite. Now you have a Hyundai Sonata <laughs> in the garage and that thing is supposed to win you games at certain times. Like we're worried if that thing can get on the interstate. <laughs> yeah, we got so, it. Sorry, we got it. sorry, Hyundai we got owners. Car, we got it. We got we got it from CarMax. It's got over a hundred thousand miles on it. Like it's. We uh... needed a car talk for the bingo card, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Preseason. I mean, preview for the season. Done. Bam. For myself, I'm Chris Perfett, the adequate host, the Luchador host at Christopher Fett on Twitter, Jeremy Rise from the Fearless Leader at Detroit Online, Ryan Matthews, the rock god, at Ryan underscore P-O-D. Guys, I say it every year, but we made it. We're all live. We made it to another football season. This one, I don't know if it feels good. It feels weird, but it's it's a good kind of weird. Do you mind if I sign off? Why not? I want to. I, I almost want to try to get all of us to sign off at the same time. My stereo last time didn't work, though. Oh, I have it. I have my own outro. You have your we own sign off. Oh, new catchphrase! We have a new catchphrase for the new season, folks. Wake up the neighbors. Do it. Do it. Sunday. It's pronounced like Sunday. <laughs> and football is played on Sunday. <laughs> 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 <laughs>